right, and we are live. Welcome to The Last Word, episode number 83. And it's another glorious Friday. We're back in front of the campfire with some more looter shooter discussion. I'm extremely excited about our special guests, so we're going to get right into it. I want to introduce a lord who both Ibantis and I had the absolute pleasure of meeting in the flesh at Guardian Con 2019. Not only is Lord one of the most dedicated Destiny players in our community, but he has the Triumph score and the raid completions to prove it. Introducing one of our most passionate and hardcore members of the Destiny community and the guardian of Clan Concerned, fellow Warlock main, fellow friend of IGN Friday Team Chat, and the Lord of IT who rightfully plugs his Xbox controller into PC when booting up Destiny on Steam. Oh my God. <laughs> Live from Cali and kind enough to make his debut within the realm of the last word. My man, Lord Teasing Teddy, how you doing, sir? Dang, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to say. That's like an amazing <laughs> intro. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here with you guys. You guys are awesome. Uh, Control. I know you can't see me, but uh, Controller Master Race is the... Uh, so you already oh know Controller Master Race, baby. What is it's, this? Uh, it's, it's, it's God's input. It's, it's the way God intended it's this. It's God's input. <laughs> Yo, I'm using it. Teddy, I'm using that. I like that. What is happening? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get so much flack for saying that, but it, it, is, it, is, it is the superior way to play Destiny, at it least is in my opinion. It's the way. Talk about um, it. Say it with your chest. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, uh, but no, yeah, thank you guys for having me. Uh, it's, thank uh, you, guys. Have, I'm have, here we, all night. We have... <laughs> we have much uh, love to our keyboard master race, but we got we I got my brother in here, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got we got a lot to talk about, so it's a it's a pretty pretty packed week. So I'm looking forward to this. Absolutely, E. I'm sorry I had to change up. I went right into it, man. I, no, I, that took like that no intro. time at all. I may as well just walk out the door. You guys are good. <laughs> got your controllers. I, I couldn't You're wait fine. to do that you intro. Guys, I, I, yeah. I broke protocol. I had to jump into the intro first. <laughs> it was no, good no, no, here. that's totally fine. Yeah, um, it's been a crazy week, obviously. We had a little downtime as we were coming to the end of the season. But the info explosion happened day after day after day after day. And now we're here to talk about all of it with all of you. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, this is obviously we are live on twitch.tv slash ebontis right now. So if you guys are listening on the audio, you guys can catch it live. Watch us on our Twitter accounts to know because sometimes the times will change. Uh, but we will get the audio up and we can thank Anchor for the audio for the podcast. You guys have been a great host to us. So we'll take a second here and thank them. Tell you guys about Anchor and we will be right back. So, um, but yeah, thank you guys, Anchor. They've been a great podcast host. Helped us get out there. And um, if you guys are catching us on audio, check us out on video as well. Always fun to watch us live and all the ridiculous faces that get to do what we do in here. So, Season of Dawn. Gentlemen, are we ready to discuss? Woo! I'm uh, pretty. <laughs> pretty hyped, slightly hyped, out of your head, good, bad. Where are we feeling? Just like 30,000 foot view, where are we feeling right now? Let's get, let's get Teddy in. Let's see where, let's get his mindset. Ca right. ca cautiously first. optimistic. That sounds like um, every Destiny. Uh, they, oh, yeah. They, they, I mean, Osir Osiris and Save 14 are by far <sighs> both my favorite characters. Uh, Osiris specifically as a warlock. Um, see, this is my uh, guy right uh, here. Uh, yeah, but, you guys are and, and, and they're, I don't know, their stories are so intertwined and so great. And I, I want them to do well with it, but. The story isn't enough to carry the DLC. The activity mm. also matters. Good point. Uh, Good point. And if the activity is not rewarding and or very boring, like Vex Offensive, then mm -hmm. I think that kind of makes or breaks the DLC. Mm -hmm. That being said, though, we have The Dawning, which is, I think, almost a month long, uh, and Crimson Doubles, which is a little less popular. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll kind of see how that flows into it. Mm -hmm. But uh, overall, I'm, I'm pretty pretty hyped but not super hyped my, my <laughs> expectations were met i guess I sh it's a better way of like i, I kind of got what i was expecting what about you guys cognito sir yeah this is um this is interesting for me um obviously you know how much i love osiris you know so oh, yeah. chat yeah. knows you know warlock main as well because my brother Ted. yeah so um you know for me curse of osiris always left a, a better taste and you know you just wanted more from him so 
Are we, are we gonna get right into the to the trailer part now? Where are we going? Because you know I could go, but I, uh, I was give, like, give me, me give me overall for the week. How you feel? No, okay, we'll for the week. Okay, piece, so yeah. I'll, I'll shut it down because I'll I'll go crazy. Nah, I know we're, we're getting. <laughs> you one, I'm setting that tee ball up. Setting we're almost it up, there. my yeah. man, my man. Um, yeah, listen, I, I would say at the start of the week, wow, you know what I mean, just wow, and then you know, just hopeful as I went throughout and kind of in the Teddy mode. Once the stream had let me temper expectations, you know, once I found out certain information, I got I tempered certain things. And then I'm like, okay, now we got a seat. <laughs> so I, I kind of went, I started off like super. And then I kind of like got into the Teddy mode where I'm like, all right, we got it. We got a seat though. Okay, I so where are you, E? Just a quick synopsis for you emotionally, mentally during uh, the probably week. Probably been on a similar roller coaster. I mean, we'll get into mm-hmm. the trailer. Um, no question that obviously mm-hmm. Bungie knows how to hype things up in 120 Ooh. seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when we get to the streams and the activities and mm-hmm. numbers and information changes that are coming, uh, I mean, it's destiny. It's going to be a moving target always is. And I, it's a $10 season. Mm-hmm. If you compare it to undying, I think we're getting hopefully a step in a good direction. So mm-hmm. I think the cautious optimism is probably pretty even across the board as we wrap up this week. So, um, (laughs) as we kind of get our basic 30,000 foot views, I'm going to open the door. Uh, Sorry, Teddy, I know you are the guest, but this one's for Cognito. Because I texted him because I saw the trailer before him. (laughs) And I was like, "Uh, you're going to want to watch this? And he's like, what? And I was like, go watch the trailer. And then there was all capital letters in my text chat with us. (laughs) So, nothing but caps just blew it up. I was like, dude, stop yelling. But, uh, trailer launched. Not too surprising. On, what was it? Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Tuesday, the trailer launched, and uh, Cognito, thoughts about the trailer? The God is back. You gotta get the Oh, there it is. (laughs) The God is back! (laughs) All right, let me me full disclosure. You know, now I can get into it. The thing about it was, obviously, like I said, with Curse, the bitter taste, you know, I'm such a Warlock man, such a fanboy of this character. I think he's one of the most coolest design characters, and lore-wise, you already know how I feel. So... You know, obviously, everything was leading to it, right? I mean, we 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 looked at the the, the tea leaves. We we you know fixed the timeline. You know what I'm saying? Season of dawn. I mean, it. Well, now we know what dawn's related to, and that's actually not him at all. So right. But when we saw last week, we did last word, and we, we I mean, not last week, but two weeks ago, we did last, last time we did last word. We were talking about how excited we were about the solar subclass changes, mm-hmm. right? So we're like, okay, and it just. Everything just seemed to point to him, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, okay, if this is not him, this is the greatest tease. <laughs> this is the greatest, you know, head fake I've ever seen. So to see the cinema, to see him walk out, and I was so ridiculous, Teddy. I was tweeting um, Oded Fair, who is the voice actor of Osiris. <laughs> and I said, I know you're there. I know you hear me, Walla. <laughs> I know you're there. You know, and I I did this a week before because I'm I know he had to come. So to see him, it was great. But to be brutally honest, as much as I'm a fan of Osiris and the Warlock, to see Saint 14 come behind it really took it to the next level. Because again, Osiris had a little negative connotation with his DLC, not the character, but with his prior DLC. So I think Bungie did it amazing just the way they set it up you see the paradox you hear the, the russian slash greek voice i'm still trying to determine yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> and um from. yeah i think, man, I think it, it's i think it's greek it's greek right okay I see, I, greek, I, yeah. I, I see the conflict back and forth so i don't know but whatever the voice is it's amazing and the storyline just seems i mean like you said he bungie knocked it out of the part with the trailer alone hype level through the roof so that's where i was bit of you saw my text i, I was losing it i was going crazy it's just a fantastic trailer so where, where are you guys at teddy like where, 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 what's your whole thing when uh you know you saw this, this so trailer? the the curse of osiris trailer which mm-hmm. uh i think we can unanimously say that was the worst expansion they've ever released or dlc yes. whatever you want to call it <laughs> yes, um not because of Osiris, just there was a lot of other factors. Uh, mm-hmm. Destiny 2 itself being an issue. But yes. the trailer for Curse of Osiris, the, the, that where he like freezes time in the Vault oh, yeah. of Glass simulation, that's like hands down, in my opinion, the best thing they've ever put out, like easily. Uh, because Vogue, and, and it's, it's the first time we're seeing Osiris in the flesh, and like yes. that, that was so cool. Uh, mm-hmm. And then the big letdown that was that DLC, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. unfortunately. But this trailer has kind of those, that similar. 
uh, similar vibe to it, and I don't know. It just uh, they got me. I was like, this is too good. Like I can't, I can't not play this. <laughs> <laughs> that music, Teddy. What about that music? Uh, the music was good. I, I loved Woo! it. I'm a, I'm a big fan of music in games and movies, and uh, mm -hmm. Destiny's always knocked that out of the park with music. So I'm Os excited. And the Osiris music specifically, or his theme, I, I really like as well. So I'm, I'm excited. I don't All know. Right. I, again, consciously optimistic. Like, mm -hmm. let me let me let me get it on Tuesday and then just <laughs> a little, and, and we'll be good. No fair enough, fair enough. Now I got I got to see E because E, you saw it before me. Yep. You know, you were sitting on it. Oh, I knew you, you were going to lose your mind. That was the easy part. Like, I knew as soon you. as like, shout out to me yes. what? Shout out to you for your your poker face. Like, you're, you're so cool and calm about something I'm gonna. You know, I'm gonna go oh, crazy yeah. about. I gotta let you enjoy it. I can't be like, dude, Osiris is there. I was like. <laughs> I was like, so, have you? I just said, have you seen it or something like that? I was like, yeah. I, I wanted you to go because you could have been asleep at the time it takes yeah. you. You probably should have been, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was just like, uh, you're gonna want to watch this whenever you get to it. But I was trying to stay even keel for your sake. Oh, you so you're perfect, welcome, bro. So what about you? Like you first seeing everything, where was your head emotionally? Uh, I can watch that trailer over and over, just because I want to shout out. Like it's one of those things where it's like. If you've ever done any editing of video, mm. you appreciate what is done more and more and more. Like, the more you watch TV shows, the more you watch movies. And just the way, like, the frame jumps with, like, every drum beat when they're looking through the different versions yes. of time. And, like, all the little pieces of the trailer. I'm just sitting there. It's like, do do do, And it's, like, the drum beats. And it's going through time. And then you have, like, the giant Saint-14 bubble as he's holding it out. And, uh, I mean, for me, just as a Titan main, it's like Saint-14 coming out was just about as big. It's like Osiris I'd seen, and it's like, it was mm -hmm. awesome to see him come back because he does need some, he needs mm -hmm. to get a, ch a second chance because not yeah. his fault, but DLC, not the best time for him. He Correct. needs a chance to try and make it a little mm -hmm. better. And at a better time, like, he's like, you know, I, I didn't get to save my friend previously, and that's what mm -hmm. he wants to do. And then you see... You see the floating shotgun, you see him grab it, you see the hand come out, and then just, like, the 14, and you're like, ah! So, Fine. no, I loved it. But, honestly, for me, I mean, I sat there and broke down. The, I have, like, my videos, I know they're too long, and I honestly didn't care this week, because I was breaking it down frame by frame. I'd be like, all right, pause, let's look here. Okay, so we've got this. I took, I literally have a 29-minute video about a two-minute trailer. So... Good. The hero we need, but not or the, the hero we deserve. I don't know whatever the phrase is. I'm, I'm watching it now, but the hero we need, but don't nope. deserve. But don't deserve. I guess. That's what it is. Yeah. So I was like, I yeah, 29 minutes and 39 seconds. So not a lot of people watch it because it's too damn long. But I don't care. <laughs> That's right. Um, Talk about. It. But well, we got to see potentially like what's going on with the story. The having mm. all pieces of Mercury broken, mm. but at the same time. Then we figure out later the sundial is that, and I think normal Mercury is going to look like Mercury. Mm -hmm. uh, but just, like, I love the different ways that Mercury looked through time. That yes. was always a really cool thing, and we got such a tiny glimpse of that in the story. When you yes. get to see past, you see it in the strike all the time, but there's not a lot that deals with the future. Mm -hmm. The dark, Correct. really dark, kind of future, future mm -hmm. Vex and very dark version of Mercury, and we actually get to see that kind of potentially in every uh, the sector every time we play, so... Mm -hmm. Seeing all the different pieces of Mercury, and then we have three timelines that we know about, but this fourth broken, shattered timeline of monochromatic broken glass is, mm -hmm. I'm really curious, is that just story related? Are we going to have maybe a boss fight in there? I'm very right. curious what that's all about. So, mm -hmm. trailer itself, yeah, yeah, ultra hyped, of course, because, I mean, you yeah. can't take two minutes of a bungee trailer and not be like, hell yeah, if unless mm -hmm. you're just, like, not a fan. So, no, would, for me, I the trailer ask, is crazy. I want to ask both of you, um... Again, I'm try it's hard not to keep emotions out of it. But my question again, with just trailer rankings, we're gonna get into the, the you know, deep dive and the and the stream. But where do you guys rank this all time? If you have to think about all the trailers, or just think about other trailers that got you as hype for an expansion that Destiny has done. You know, where where would you guys place this? Taken King has to be in the top two for me. Mm-hmm. I think Taken uh, King would probably be the, the top one just because that opening yeah. cutscene is like it's so amazing. Mm. Yeah. It's just so good. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd probably put this as like top three. This no, top no three, specific, right? Yeah, it's, no specific it's, order. It's near the top, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's good. I like it. So, so you got Taken King. What else you got, Teddy? Just if you're. The Osiris one. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah trailer so. wise, what about you, E? The same kind of cadence? Or? Uh, I mean, Taken King definitely up there just for mm -hmm. the, the gravity of. 
his power when you see Oryx's actual power of his ship when what he does is still always one mm-hmm. of the biggest. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that we've had for mm-hmm. other cinematics and things. Um, I I'm trying to remember. Rise of Iron was cool. Rise of Iron was actually cool with Saladin mm-hmm. and like the mm-hmm. Siva and shutting that thing down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, those are definitely pretty cool. Uh, but I think this one showed a lot of potential in the trailer yes. that I think actually I liked. And also some of one iconic character we have not seen and bringing mm-hmm. one back that needed it. So I think the characters mm-hmm. involved gave it as much weight as many others. Because, I mean, Absolutely. Saladin's cool, but we see him, like, you know, every three weeks or every other week, it feels like, lately. But mm-hmm. um, we see him a lot. So his trailer was cool, and it was nice to see an old story. But this is, like, now it's, like, in, you know, in the actual mm-hmm. lore at this point, And both are huge, massive characters. So it definitely had some weight in there for me with that. So it's up there for sure. Yeah, I'm in the same, I'm in the same pocket. Yeah, T- definitely Taken King. You know, you definitely remember how epic, you know, he Oryx was as a as a villain and how true the threat was and the new enemy type and all that stuff with the Taken. But um, yeah, man, this just the the iconic level of both Osiris and Say 14. We know the payoffs to the story. We know, and what was do- dope was the way it was cut with the Say 14 mission with the you know the Vex Memorial. Yep. It added a lot of you know flavor to it. So for me, again, just trailer. You know what I'm saying? I have to put it up there. It's probably fighting with one or two. I would say probably two, but this is there. So yeah, my, my three is probably Taken King, this, and um, and Curse. Because obviously that was the first time I ever saw Osiris. So. <laughs> yeah, it's like that one's up there for you just because you're like, yeah. it's my guy. Yeah, Osiris, <laughs> Vault of Glass, my ugly, my favorite ray. It's like, it was just so much going on. It was yeah. like, boof. <laughs> I was going crazy. Well, it was also the idea of like, it's the implications of what's happening. Yeah. Of when it says when you slew, which I'm not sure. I always I keep hearing that word. I'm like, is that grammar right? But I know they would have checked it a hundred times. Uh, <laughs> it just sounds weird. <clears throat> but mm-hmm. when he's like, when you slew the undying mind, it's like the implications of you see the wave of energy yes. from the traveler basically yes. stop, and they're trying to actually go back and change time. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there going. Okay, some people are going to be mad because they're working with time travel. Everybody gets always angry about that. Mm-hmm. But two, if this is a point, and even I think Luke or someone said, this mm-hmm. is not like the best connection that we wanted in right. story from season to season, but this mm-hmm. is like really a good place for us to start. And I think that right. could be potentially them not completely like wiping out everything we've done, but also right. giving them a place if they truly want to build the narrative momentum going into Season 9, 10, 11, year 4, 5, 6, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. This is a point for them where, like, okay, we need some place to build from. This is where we start. And yeah. I think that's actually pretty cool. Almost had some uh, Endgame, uh, Avengers, you know, Infinity War Endgame kind of vibes to it with the multiple timeline. You know, obviously the, the, the Cabal <laughs> now trying to change the effects with the Red War. So I thought that was a little homage, a little touch to that. You know what I'm saying? Have to fix the timeline. What we did affected that. Now, whether or not... Um, I like the transition in the game <laughs> is another story. You know what I'm yeah. saying? The trailer was amazing, and I spoke shout out to Attic. Part of my only issue was again, we know how Luke had made the, the whole point about seasons transitioning into you should have been there moment. We all agreed the Adair mind was eh, <laughs> was not the greatest transition. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we were expect- not yet. Yeah. exactly. So we were expecting, you know, something. I I put it this way. I, I, I wish we would have saw in a perfect world just the Osiris part talking to us in game. Like, go to Mercury, right? Yeah. And oh, then I it's like, boom. Me. I, that's, I, yes, I totally agree. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. it's, they're so close. Because, again, the trailer now gives everything up, but it, you just need that in game transition to set it up. To, and that's the only I, you know, misstep I would say happened here. But um, you know, that, that, it's just me. You know, I don't know where you guys are at with that. Teddy, what Teddy. about you? I mean, were you, were you I, on I the transition? Of, we didn't have you on last. I uh, I kind of agree with what you said. I mean, it's uh, mm-hmm. the the real world transition is awesome, but yes. the in game transition is kind of lacking. But mm-hmm. again, I uh, once the Undying Mind came out and, and we got what we got, and it wasn't this like reprisal of the boss or the strike mm-hmm. or anything. We were mm-hmm. and that's when I was kind of like, all right, you know, if this is what they're gonna do. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna temper my expectations, mm. and so again, I, I kind of got what I expected. I wasn't, I wasn't too, uh, wasn't like too upset or too yeah. disappointed in any way. Um, 
but better it's man. better man than me. <laughs> I mean, I, I, but Bungie, Bungie's hurt my heart too many times. So <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I'm getting old. I can't, I can't do this. Anymore. Like, can't do <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. We, but, we and E had uh, some choice, choice words and feelings. <laughs> last, last word, you know, regarding that, you know, it's just I, again. I, I, you get, no, get it, Teddy. I, I, I've, I've, I've gotten, I've gotten too upset too many times. <laughs> at them because I, I love the game i mean that, that's course, that's the real reason but um yeah we all do and and, and uh i rather than getting upset at them mm-hmm. i've come to this place in the last i would say the last since destiny 2 came out because i think that was a big turning point mm-hmm. I've, I've tried to more understand mm-hmm. their line of thinking and their reasoning and not necessarily to justify it but just so yeah. that for myself and so i can communicate it to others mm-hmm. to try and understand like why did they do this why did they do it like this why did this happen and you mm-hmm. know make, making games is complicated like it's not a it's not an easy thing, and uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm sure they have their own constraints. And at the end mm-hmm. of the day, they are a business. They got to make money, and yes. that's what fuels their decisions. And whether mm-hmm. we like that or not, you know, we can voice our concerns. But they, <laughs> they, it's up to them. It's a it's, more strike. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's up to like them, right? Like, I was just, uh, you already had my Zabala uh, going, dude. Whether we want, <laughs> want it or not. <laughs> We're going to go to war with the Cabal on Mars. Yeah. Oh, we are, we are at war with the Cabal again. We tweet over for yes. like a month, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, um, shout out to FKIO in chat saying, this is also the moment when you realize when we saw in the Vidoc back in mm-hmm. June or whenever it was, when you see the whiteboard and it says fix the timeline, we're like, that's real. Yeah. This is actually like, this has implications that like that little whiteboard of those like years of planning, it's like they do have a hope of something that they want to do. So it's like really, mm-hmm. really cool. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Just got to fix that transition. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still not gonna let it go. <laughs> no, I mean, I, mean, I, I think they, I think they got enough crap probably everywhere. I don't think enough mm-hmm. people were like, "Is this it?" Like, yeah. what? This this only yeah. the I, way they hyped it. Like, I got an email from Bungie regarding the Undying Mine and and logging in and you know it, again. So I'm not trying to go too hard on them, but the expectation was there. Like, is if something special I mean, was gonna happen? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was on the roadmap. Set it himself. So it was on the roadmap. Yeah. It was on the roadmap. Like that yeah. was the thing that we were expecting. Mm-hmm. We should have learned from Arc Week with the roadmap, but still. I'm holding feet to fire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I ain't letting it go, y'all. It was a terrible transition. I'm sorry. I, 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 under, I Teddy, respectfully, I understand what you're saying, I, and we know they're independent, and we yeah, know yeah. the resources are lower. I, I'm trying to be as respectful as possible. Again, it's just we talked about it at at Guardian Con with a couple of the uh, the Bungie guys, and. The thing about this game, the reason why we're so, I don't say petty or ridiculous, it's just that, you know, this game has some of the most iconic lore buried behind it, even when you do a raid. And one thing I spoke to one of the members of the raid team, I was just like, there's something to be said when you start up Last Wish and you hear Petra Venge's voice, right? And she's explaining what's about to happen. Just those little nuances add so much. If you just give a cinematic, you know, the Aldrin thing, the, these little things, you know what I'm saying? That, And again, it may be harder to create than I even know, but what, all I'm saying is that that really adds to world building and character building. And I just wish, like I said, if the Undying Mind was just what it was, okay, fine. But if we would have had this Osiris slash Saint 14 development in the game told us in a, in a nice transitionary way, I would have been money. I, bro, I, I leave them alone. So just, you know, things they can improve on. That's all. Oh, 100%. I, I agree. Like, if, if Osiris showed up, uh, you know, like this week, since it's the last week, and he's like, hey, what you're doing with the Undying Mind is causing these problems. And it literally, just like one line of dialogue would bro. have made a, would have made a difference. 100%. Yep. That's all I'm I, I agree. Like, um, but... I thinking about it now since since we we're just talking about it, I mm-hmm. kind of also give them a pass because this was the Shadow Keep season. Mm-hmm. So kind of what uh, Ibantis was saying, that I feel like this is their stepping off point, right, to to mm-hmm. continue that world building and uh, mm-hmm. also obviously feedback, right? Like you know we're yeah. saying this is not good, and <laughs> hopefully the the next seasonal transition and the following seasonal transition is a uh, is a little bit better since uh, mm-hmm. I would imagine the seasons probably have like a six month development time. Yeah, it would be my my guess, my my rough estimate. Yeah. Um, they did also so. mention seasons were kind of developed in, in a combination matter, right? Where so the, yeah. this was already kind of done in conjunction with yep. Shadow Keep, Season of Undying, and Season of the Dawn, correct? Or yeah, they they, they yeah, make them in right. parallel. They yeah. they work on them simultaneously. Yeah. yeah, I mean they have to commit to choices long enough in advance in development to be like, yes. okay, we have to make this. It's like okay, we can learn lessons from stuff like nine months ago, but we can't learn mm-hmm. lessons from this transition yet. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Yeah. I mean, but it was like also Prescott. Uh, it was WD is saying like mm-hmm. Luke unfortunately painted that amazing picture of eight oh one walking in and walking out and all the stuff with the drifter and he's like, hey, come come visit me when she leaves or something like that. Mm-hmm in your mind is like that's what we want mm-hmm. and he said in theory that's what we'd love to have but it's like can you tell us when that might be happening because if it's like a year down the road <laughs> i'm gonna pull my expectations way back because right now you put them up here and then you chop yeah. my knees off so it's just like it's just kind of those couple of things that's like they had said as you said between the calendar between his description of that and then just like hyping it up and then you find if you were to like get your th- email and then you log in at home and you're like it's the same on level one <laughs> Same on level two. There's no voice difference, no and voice difference, he just comes no through the portal. Okay, just, it's just like, okay. and that's like, that's kind of a letdown. But we at least have this trailer. But I think, as you said, Cognito, it almost could have been better if, you know, you log in on Tuesday and there's like, you just hear in a voiceover just in orbit saying, uh, and it's just like Osiris talking to you somehow. Say, so be like, mm-hmm. hey, what you did with the Undying Mind kind of broke things. Come see me on Mercury. You fly in, and then you see that mm-hmm. cinematic. I know they're doing the cinematic for sales. People get hyped. Yeah, absolutely. But also, absolutely. in turn, like, I kind of wish they didn't because that would be almost a better transition. That would be cool. So, I, agree. I don't know. I agree. But we digress. <laughs> yeah. So, that we've definitely looked at the trailer. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of it. I've broken it down a lot. We'll cover more pieces as we go. Mm-hmm. But the second thing we got on a Wednesday, the stream. Ooh. So, who watched this thing live? Who caught it later? Um, what did you guys think? Did you guys enjoy... How would you how would you rank the stream? Was it good? What'd you guys think? Uh, whoever wants to get it going, let's get, let's get Teddy. I uh, I think it was one of their weaker streams, but mm-hmm. that being said, I don't think it was like bad. Um, I think it was more weak simply because they didn't show as much as they normally do. Yes. Um, which anecdotally, from experience, that's usually not a good thing when they're <laughs> when they're uh, when they're kind of coy with information, yeah. um, this close to release at least. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know, right? Like you know, the, the, we didn't really see enough of the sundial for me to make like a, a full uh, assessment of it. Just enough mm-hmm. of it that I was like, all right, I'm interested now. Mm-hmm. You know, if if it's like menagerie, then I, I guess I'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I don't know. It was. It was kind of meh. Like, I, I, if I had to rank it, I'd probably say it's like a seven out of ten. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't bad, wasn't great. I feel you, bro. I feel you, bro. How about you guys? What, you, what, do, what do you think? What about you, Cognito? Um, whew, let me see. Started, it was. It's kind of. I'm very conflicted with this. Um, I think <laughs> Teddy nailed it. Uh, for me, you know, obviously, you know, the the aesthetic. You, st- I started to see the uh, the 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 Saint fourteen kind of armor sets and stuff like that. I thought that was cool. I thought Sundial looked cool, looked like it had a potential. I mean, anything that's Menagerie-esque, at this point, I'm going to be a fanboy of. I, I love that activity. I think it's one of the greatest activities going. Um, it was cool to see the Curse of Osiris weapons, you know, mm, come back. Yes. I thought th- I thought that was really cool. You know, um, you know, obviously as a Warlock main, I wanted to see a lot of the sub the solar subclass stuff in action. So getting to see the little three fireballs go oh, across that, the that looks so cool. Woo! I was like, okay. So I started off high. I was actually really cool. That you know, we got some artifact breakdown. I'm starting to understand the logic behind where they're going with that. As far as um, oh, it almost feels e like um, like like induced meta changes where it's like hey oh yeah you try these things out because these mods are going to be here and i actually don't mind it because i think as destiny players we kind of get locked into our loadouts and we get locked into comfort you know the, the izanagi recluse swarm midnight of the raven coup. loadout midnight coup is probably the prime example <laughs> you know what i'm saying so. yeah so that's that i mean as far as now this is where i'm totally in agreement with teddy is that you know after the sundial thing they showed maybe i forgot what other things they showed maybe one or two other things but it ended so abrupt to me. Yeah. yeah. Like I felt like they I was I was in pocket. I felt like I was I was gonna get like another twenty more minutes or so. And it was just like, okay, boom. And and to Teddy's point, I've never seen them so secretive, so non revealing, you know. We'll talk about pinnacles and all that, you know, later about, you know, hmm. they will be there. But you know, it, it just felt like, hmm. And then let's be real, the elephant in the room, at least for me. It was Trials of Osiris, right? So coming in, I, but before this, I kept expectations low. Trials was on hiatus. They've told us a million times, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Now, 
you know, we get in the Osiris tidbits, the bread comes, you see the trailer, you're like, hmm, maybe. Then you see in the trailer, 3v3 elimination map. Hmm, maybe, right? And it's like, then you hear, you know, through the scuttlebutt, shout out to Reddit and everything, real crafty in these guys, the hardcore trials guys going to Bungie. Hmm, maybe, right? You know, as a trials fan, I'm, I'm sitting there as a PvP guy, I'm sitting there like, yo, this might happen. So now I'm getting there. Now, right before the stream, shout out to Fallout, and I believe it's 5,000 watts. And they brought me right back down to Earth. Yeah, they're like, they were they're like, flying out later. They're like, they're flying out now. And I'm like, oh, because I'm thinking they were gonna, they're going to they're show Sundown, but they're going to have like a P, like a classic Bungie PvP guys, you know, set up with and all the classics. So I'm like, okay, so they're not there. Okay, that means if they're coming in, that means Charles ain't this season. So I really shot myself back down. But even shotting myself back down to no trials, I have to agree with Teddy again. I, I it just felt so abrupt and, and 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 like they just weren't going to reveal a lot. And that could go two ways, right? That can go like, hey, we ain't got much to show, so we're gonna stretch this out. <laughs> uh, or you know, it could be like they it's really packed, and we just want to try a new approach. So I'm gonna give it to you. I've been rambling. You know, mm, I didn't get a chance to speak here. to you. Since stream, I don't think we talk much post stream, and I, I gotta know where your head's at with this stream. Uh, well, first thing we got, uh, it is nice, and as somebody I forget who said it in chat, mm -hmm. um, just there, the uh, it was Agent Grizzly, um, mm -hmm. the excitement the Bungie developers have, the writers have for the story, working with these yeah, characters. Yeah. That got one when they stuck. Yeah, it was like when they started out talking about it, like the hype that those two, I think the first two on the chairs had. Yeah. That was cool. Like, because yes. we get to see this world that they've built, and mm -hmm. these developers are just like ultra pumped about it. And yeah. it's nice to know that, hey, we're excited about seeing Osiris and St. 14, and they're sitting in the same boat. They just get to make it. So yeah. they're having a really good time on that front. So that was actually cool. I'm like, okay, so we're talking about the lore, but we haven't seen any gameplay yet. Cool. Mm -hmm. Then Tomo comes out, um, and then I forget who he was sitting next to. But they went through a little bit more of the Hunter. And they were showing, we got to see the character. We're looking at 960 power. And I'm going, yes. what does that mean? Is it none? <laughs> Is it a little bit? What are we doing? So, but we didn't get any answer on that. So well, trust me, when it ended, I was like, ah, ah, ah. and then finally I saw on like Twitter that it was going to come tomorrow. I'm like, because ah, I worked mm -hmm. tomorrow. I worked the next night. So I was like, I'm going to wait till the end just to see it. So mm -hmm. that was like kind of the, eh, 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 that part. Mm -hmm. But then we got to dig into Artifact. Which, after yes. breaking it down, we got to see they're going into more range. Mm -hmm. So we did get to see that we've got scouts, pulses, mm -hmm. snipers, linear fusions, bows, kind of all ranged precision hits yes. for all of the mods. For unstoppable, for barrier, autos are going to be your overload. Um, mm -hmm. I broke Most of it doesn't look like they've like ventured far, though. Because right. if you break down the other couple of columns, the ones they didn't go too deep into, did they did the new one with the healing orbs. So healing mm -hmm. orbs for yourself from precision hits. I'm like, that seems odd because you have to precision shoot something from far away, but then you get an orb that sits way out there that you have to go get. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, get, that's yeah, kind of yeah. weird, but we'll have to see how that one plays out in real. Mm -hmm. um, but then you get to see it's like the variations aren't that much different. You've got Breach Refractor that was just grenade energy. Now it's grenade and, and uh, mm -hmm. melee energy, but it's a little costlier. Instead mm -hmm. of... Um, Arc battery, it looks like it's a void battery. And they may mm -hmm. they may be placeholders, but this far along, I'm guessing it's probably pretty close. So mm -hmm. it doesn't look like they're really changing the game. I mean, the heavy mm -hmm. finisher, which I don't think I ever heard anybody hardly use. Yeah. Because it's just too costly, and unless that thing's just a little tweaked, it still mm -hmm. doesn't seem like it's worth it. And they haven't even like put anything else in there. So for me, the artifact was like, hey, what are going to be the new mods? Are we going to play any different more builds and play styles? And it honestly, looks just going to be like a hey, solar variation on a couple of things, but void still in there. So it's not really a big departure, which was kind of. He is not feeling that artifact. <laughs> I like the I like the theory behind it, but like for them to say, hey, we can put game breaking things in there for three months, mm -hmm. and then you know we know it's going away. It's temporary. It doesn't seem mm -hmm. like they stepped too far away from like their little comfort zone. It doesn't feel mm -hmm. like they ventured very far with creative mods, at least from what I could see. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other thing, we got to see the new mods. Now, that has mm -hmm. me intrigued, the new armor mods. Yes. So we've got the new mods with regards to uh, getting, a, like, getting charged with light and then consuming the light. 
for mm -hmm. these different abilities. A couple of them sound fairly cool. Some of them are going to cost you stats, which is an interesting trade-off. Like, to use one of them, it's going to cost you minus 10 yeah. discipline. The so there's all that going there. Um, mm -hmm. So they're definitely getting deeper into the builds on that side, which I am intrigued about because mm -hmm. armor for me always getting to be more fun is definitely something mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to. I still have issues with armor 2.0, but that's a thing. Mm -hmm. Um and then we get to the sundial. I'm like, cool. So we got the opening section. I'm like waiting to see these different zones. Okay, we're going into the future Mercury. And then, bam, it's cut off. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I was in the same boat. Like, I'll bo like for both you guys. I was just like, mm -hmm. how does it go from here's the build, here's the armor. And as mm -hmm. you're seeing like 37 minutes into the stream and it just like dies. And I don't know how they could go that hard to just yeah. buy. <laughs> it's, yeah, it that's, that's, a, that's. That was either a producer or somebody who wrote the program for that like stream was like, I don't know what to put at the end of this. Just cut it off. Like, I don't, I, I was yeah, like just to recycle the trailer. Yeah, I don't it know. Just, like, uh, it, it it's, felt weird. There could have been some other recap mm -hmm. at the end. Like, hey, we do, and I think I heard this. Like, I did listen to shout out to DCB. I just listened to him to him today because mm -hmm. it was like working around the house. Salute. Salute. Um, and for even them, it was just like. Hey, this could be a time even just for Deej to say, it's like, some of you may have questions about power level. Uh, we're going to have some details tomorrow. Some of you may want to see the ritual weapons. We honestly want to surprise you with those. These mm -hmm. things will exist, but at this point, we're trying to keep things a little bit more of a mystery as we mm -hmm. go into this next season so you guys can experience it because we have had some feedback say that maybe you've told us too much up front. They didn't show mm -hmm. us exotics, so there's no yeah, teasers about those, about no that. exotic I armor. So I mean, oh, wait, wait, hold on, no, no. Did we get the gun though? There was a gun. There's like that there's a couple. Yeah, there's a couple in guns. The trailer, though, but in the trailer, they haven't shown yeah. the armor. Like we got right. to see yes. the veil yes. on the hunter before and stuff. So correct. They're being a little more cagey with some stuff. And honestly, just occasionally, if you were just like, we want you guys to enjoy some of the surprises. So mm -hmm. let us know your feedback. But honestly, at this point, and that may be almost too candid for Deej to say, but something along those lines in Deej speak would have mm -hmm. been kind of, I think, a better way to end it than just, and that's all we got, and we'll see you later. Like, just a, yeah, 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 yeah. a calmer transition <laughs> out of it to I say, agree. we do have more to show you. There's more for you to see once you log in on Tuesday. It just mm -hmm. felt a little odd, I think, on I the end. Tell you, are we going too hard, man? Are we, are we being really no, too no, I'm, 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 I'm a listener, so I, mm -hmm. I, I'm enjoying it. But uh, I've got some thoughts on the... Uh, the mods and the artifact. Let's uh, go, Teddy. Let's get go. It, get it. Let's do it. So the the new mods. Uh, I, so I'll ignore the artifact for a second. The the charge mm -hmm. with light mods. Um, mm. From what we saw, we didn't see a lot of them, but from mm -hmm. what we saw on paper, they seem very interesting and very uh, usable. But we'll have to see the effects if they're worth it. Um, mm -hmm. But that leads me to another problem that you kind of touched on, which is armor 2.0. Oh. So when they when they advertised <laughs> armor 2.0 to us. Uh, they basically told us, and this was in Luke's um, developer commentary. Mm -hmm. This was in their Vidox leading up to Shadowkeep. Oh, they were they go. were like, play the game the way you want to play the game. Mm -hmm. Now, if you compare, <laughs> if you compare <laughs> Destiny before Shadowkeep, mm -hmm. you could pretty much put any set of armor on, and it worked. Like, what per perks aside, like you needed good rolls, but effectively you could put any piece of armor on it, and it mm -hmm. would be fine. But now, with Armor 2.0. You're fighting so many levels of RNG to get a not not a god tier piece of armor, a usable piece of armor, and I'm pigeonholed into well I have to get this element, I have to get this, I have to get this, and then all and then all of a sudden this new season comes out and it's like, hey we got these new awesome mods and unlike last season they work everywhere, mm -hmm. but all that armor you grinded for that that's like kind of okay or maybe god tier it's kind of useless now because. Uh, the mods don't like work on that mm -hmm. um, and i get it they want us to keep playing the game and mm -hmm. that's you know that, that is part of their i'm sure some metric or goal that they have uh mm -hmm. whatever but that i think really put a sour taste in my mouth when they were like mm -hmm. yeah the, you have to get the new armor again i'm regardless i'm gonna grind the armor but that's beside the point mm -hmm. and then you have the artifact which i'm really torn about the artifact because i on the one hand, I really like the idea of this thing that you level up every season and mm -hmm. uh, the power goes away. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I also don't like that. Mm, tell me why um, you don't. It triumphs. That's really the yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. <laughs> that, that's no, what, point, that's what it boils down to is, is mm -hmm. I have to get to rank 20 every season. And if, if that you know those three months I'm busy and I don't have the time to grind bounties mm -hmm. endlessly, that, you know, that, that affects me negatively. 20 or 200? 20. Mm-hmm. You have to get 20 to get the max uh, triumph 
Gotcha. Uh, the, the tier three of that triumph, um, mm -hmm. which goes away at every season, because the triumph is specifically for whatever artifact that season is tied to. And then the mods and the artifact, they so the way they advertised that to us was um, these are mods that we'll put in the game that are kind of experimental, which that's true. They did put in right. some pretty experimental mods. Uh, and then the specific line that I'm that I'm referring to is at the end of the season, we'll look at what mods worked and which ones didn't. And we'll mm -hmm. put some of them in the game as permanent mods. Yes. There was no mention of that at any point. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, mm -hmm. what is it, uh, the, the grenade buff one and the arc one Oppressive should be darkness. in the game. Press of Oppressive darkness, darkness, thank you. And, uh, yeah. Thunder Coil. Thunder Coil. I'm not saying those should be in the game. I right. think those, those need to be out of the game. But there are some other ones on there that I think would permanently uh, be good additions to the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they haven't said anything, so I'm kind of like, are you just scrapping that idea altogether? Is this just a, you know, a one and done thing? And then lastly, uh, you touched on the weapon part. Uh, I, I kind of like when they're like, hey, you know, these are the weapons for this season. We're trying to kind of uh, induce this this meta meta, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. by forcing players to use these weapons. But I also don't like that because if the weapons end up being like pretty bad archetypes or weapons that just need some love mm -hmm. uh it, it really limits what you can do especially in the pvp uh sandbox right like if 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 the auto rifle is the focus uh mm -hmm. i'm not gonna put an auto rifle on a pvp let's be honest like that's not <laughs> <laughs> um, but like Talk about it. but if, if we need to or for whatever reason for something mm -hmm. a triumph or a bounty or whatever it just it 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 makes the game less enjoyable. And then we, mm -hmm. we kind of talked about this before the stream, but mm -hmm. my effort to progress in something mm -hmm. actively be, makes me a detriment to my teammates uh, mm -hmm. in PvP and PvE because mm -hmm. I have to have this bad loadout on, uh, which is, it's a whole other rant that I could get into. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go down that road, but uh, mm -hmm. that, that also kind of bothers me, but I'm, again, mm -hmm. I'm kind of cautiously optimistic because I, I might be worried, but then right. nothing, nothing might come of it. Right. Like it won't, it won't matter. I'm only going to have to put it on for the nightfall or something. Right. Which, since the power is going up, that might also not be a problem anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was man. like, I need to literally make that list into bullet points and let's start breaking them down. So yeah, he's <laughs> killing it. I was yeah, like, yeah. so we started on like armor 2.0 for me is an issue, like because I'm with you. You have the RNG of I finally got a legendary piece of Iron Banner armor to drop at like 60 points, and it was actually usable. And I was like, thank God. That's like one of my first ones this season. Wow. That's actually yeah, like get, not trash stats. When I get 20 plus mobility, I'm like, I can't use this. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like I got, I got like a 65 or 67 piece of armor in Reckoning the other day. And mm -hmm. uh, I think 20 plus of it was in mobility. The other 20 was in, <laughs> was in strength. And I'm like, I can't. Well, like, really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, like, anyway, sorry, I cut you off. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're good. Trust me, because I've been in the same boat. But I was like, I finally mm -hmm. get one piece. And that mm -hmm. is season eight Iron Banner armor, which will not use these new mods. So I'm like. Throw that out. Like, I'm just kind of mm -hmm. going, okay. So, as you're saying, like, major issues I've got with, like, the mods, armor 2.0 is, like, exotic armor in the Like, honestly, the idea of kind of buy exotics already, you have to try and get a roll of, of good stats anyway. Then you mm -hmm. have to try and get an exotic to drop that you want. Why does it even have an affinity on it in the first place? Can it just That's be, like, point. rainbow affinity or whatever you want to call it? Like, <laughs> it should just, I don't know the proper term, but, like, use, like, R RGB or whatever. RGB. Like, <laughs> RGB armor, just, like, pick your, pick your poison. But, like, exotics, if you want to go full, especially, like, if you're going for, like, nightmare hunts or anything like that, the give and take there of why do I want to do a little less here for a little more there, let me use the exotics and, like, have... Just the exotics, go throw that extra slot out there and be like that, you know, asterisk, just like seasonal slot. Exotics just work because it's hard mm -hmm. enough to go for, hey, I finally got a Crown of Tempest. Its stats blow. Never mind. And mm -hmm. then I may get another one later on that I might use. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I just like to see armor get that. And then you talk about the seasonal mods of like, okay, I just got that 60 stat, but it's not mm -hmm. going to work with the new mods with this charge with light, which sounds like it has potential because there's one, the higher the charges you get, um, I don't know what did Cryptic say. I'll get to that in a second. Yeah, he um, said if you moved your cam slightly right, your mic would look like State 14. <laughs> Here, <laughs> this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm done. <laughs> and they go to sponsorship. <laughs> Yo, uh, clip that yeah, the, was the, hilarious. The new, the new YouTube algorithm just get, let this one get marked <laughs> not for kids, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you cricket one. That was the, the comment of the year. That's hilarious. Oh, anyway, uh, I can't I can't unsee it now. <laughs> yeah, I can't unsee it. Like cricket now got me messed up. Now I can't even unsee it. <laughs> Damn you, cryptic. This is why you have an audio version. That's why we're not this year. Oh god. Um, oh my god, that's too funny. But yeah, it's like you also have things like they haven't mentioned the giant pain that is exotic weapons that can't use mods. Period. So you have things like Suros yeah. for overload rounds. You've got Graviton Lance, which I wouldn't mind using because pulses are coming, but I can't mm -hmm. go slap anti-barriers on it to hit it from yeah. far. Mm -hmm. So all of those things not touched. And those are all in. quality well, of life well, things. No, they like, they are doing a the exotic of, thing. They the, are doing the, 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 the faded engram change. Yeah, that exotic is, engram change, those are good. We'll get which to is that positive, right? Like that, yeah. I mean, it's, not, it's not amazing, but it, it kind of mm -hmm. band-aids the problem. Yeah. Well, you got you got you got some opinions there. Yes, I'm going to jump in. <laughs> yeah, I just I'm I'm torn because with the exotic part, I see. What, first of all, I, I agree with both of you in reference to exotic affinity. I think that's first of all affinity in itself. We I feel at this stage we should have some kind of resolution in terms of we know there's this extra layer of RNG. So why don't we have a resource, maybe if it's shards or prisms, to change said affinity to work with a build you want so at least you have that flexibility, right? So that's one. Two, this is the part I'm torn as far as artifact mods in pertaining to the specific season and exotics. There's part of me that loves the fact that they are limited to legendary and that we get a chance to mess with the meta and um, in the sense that, okay, because here's my thought process. There's part of me that says, yo, I'm going to get to try different guns just to try different things. Yes, it is force. It is, it is mess. And Teddy's point, it is constraining you to a specific way of playing that may not be helpful to your teammates sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I will agree with that. However, there's another part of me that says, well, if, it, if we do open it up to exotics, you know, how crazy could it get? Like, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm torn, man, because part of me is like, that's that really all PVE, be... though. It's like, that's not going to hurt. Like, you're telling mm -hmm. me if you go run through a Nightfall Strike and you're like, oh, uh, maybe I want to go throw Anti-Barrier on my Risk Runner. Just to right. run a little different than you want to, you, mm -hmm. I mean, again, you're looking at, like, the whole idea of Recluse being this overwhelming force. And, yeah, they're going to try and push him away from that with more mm -hmm. ranged focus. But then, in turn... Mm -hmm. If I have to go through anti-barrier mods on, and if, mm -hmm. say, we're running a Nightfall, and I'm not going to mm -hmm. go p depend on the other two, whoever mm -hmm. I'm going to get paired up with, I'm going to need some type of auto rifle, say it's overload, right. and I'm running that type of strike, and then right. I need anti-barrier unstoppable. I'm not, mm -hmm. and I can't use, that's two slots, mm -hmm. can't use an exotic in either one, mm -hmm. and that's where there's quite a few options. Guns, again, older ones, like mm -hmm. Sweet Business, like Graviton Lance, like Soros no, Regime, that could give I you agree. a lot of variety, and again... These are guns that we've been holding on to for a while that I'd just like to have time. a reason to use. No, you're right. I, you're not wrong. I, I think where I struggle, where I'm kind of playing the, the company line now, is that... <coughs> shell. They, <coughs> I know. Let me, let me shell for Bungie. Let me get my shell on. <laughs> um, <laughs> where I, I do worry for balance with them. Because, again, if we got the sweet business, it, like, for example, scouts are running around. Like, if we got Polaris Lance running around with you know unstoppable and stuff like that i do worry how strong that is like how how really powerful that is in in in, in conjunction with the other intrinsic exotic perks so from balance standpoint maybe they're saying to themselves we don't want to open it up just like that because we can't control they could start melting stuff you know what i'm saying because we all know since, you know, Season of Drifter with the Reckoning and all that stuff and all the nerfs we got, you know, to a lot of exotic armors and Skull Dyer and Makar and stuff like that, they're on this thing where they don't want us melting things. They don't want us just tearing through content. And I think part of me does side with them a little bit, just a little bit. From from a player standpoint, it's fun, right? You get your build, you throw on your, your Huckleberry, you throw on your wrist runner, if, if SMGs are the season to do whatever. And you can have... Uh oh, go, go, jump in. Go ahead, stop. No, me. I just go have go. a counterpoint to this because... Let's go, go for it. 
the only function of these mods is to literally break shields, stop an mm -hmm. unstoppable in their track, and overload mm -hmm. the same principle to stop them from moving. Mm -hmm. If the guns in and of themselves are balanced, that shouldn't be a factor at all. That's so really what you're trying to do is just tell me it's like we don't want you using exotics in your PvE loadouts. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how I'm that, getting from That's how it feels to me because if yeah. they feel like those guns are balanced and they do these sandbox sweeps and they'll do them again, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. Graviton Lane's got a 30% buff but I can't go use it when pulse rifles are going on, mm -hmm. my mind's going, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. No, I feel, listen, from a player standpoint, I feel you. Like, it, it, it's more fun that way and, and it's definitely, you know, something that it would make me use. I will say this to your defense. Like, let's say this was the sidearm. <laughs> He's like, I'm agreeing with you. Yes, I'm. Yeah. <laughs> right, we'll and by the way, Teddy, guess. I know we're talking. I, yes. I, I was going to say, I know we're talking banter. and I can hold my hand up, but Teddy, feel free to just be like, yeah, please if, jump, if, yeah, if you jump in, jump please, because we will yeah. Yeah, please jump in, Teddy. But, you know, the thing I would say is this, like, in, in, I, in, in seeing your point, with, let's say, for example, this was a sidearm season, right? And, you know, sidearms had the thing. It would be cool uh. to dust off Rat King, right? And, and, would and it throw up. Would it? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> go ahead, Teddy. I'm trying to see his side. I, I'm trying. I, I'm right. to no, You had a Polaris Lance. If Polaris Lance is in the game, as is, if you can use it anyway, all I'm going to do with that thing is just break some champion mm -hmm. mechanics, and then mm -hmm. I'm still going to have the same gun. That's all it I does. Feel you. I feel you. And they honestly, like, I was kind of curious if we were going to get something besides Overload Barrier and Unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Those are still identical. Yeah. They're just on different enemies. We've now got Cabal and the Sundial mm -hmm. and things like that. But the exotic, the exotic. I was like, Teddy, come on, we got to jump in. I heard you chopping, Teddy. Go. I've, I've got a couple of things. So, so let's start mm -hmm. with Infinity, since that's that's the kind of where we're at. So, yep. I think Infinity's got to go, uh, just like flat out. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's got to go. At first, when they announced it, I was I was a little upset about it, and people were kind of like digging into it, and they were like, okay, which mods work on what? And then and then it came out, and we got, we got our hands with it, and we were like, okay, you know, I can kind of see what they were going for. But then they put out this Bungie update, Ooh. where they attempted to justify the affinity mm, system. And that's that when I was like, like and that's when I was like, this is the dumbest reason in the world, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you, Get him, Teddy. Let's go. So, for you those think. people who don't know what you're talking about, please refresh them. Oh, yeah, please so, refresh the, the, I, well, I'm going to get there. Right. So, so, they basically said uh, that the reason that you cannot equip mods mm -hmm. to uh, to oh, any mod to any affinity now. is that mm -hmm. the menu was too confusing. There were too many things in the menu, and I immediately, immediately, <laughs> loaded up my inventory with 50 shaders, inspected <laughs> an item, hit down on the D-pad because I play on controller. Uh, control the master race. Oh, yeah, control master race. Opened up uh, the the shader menu and was like, "Look, I've got 50 shaders right here. You think this is too confusing for me? This is <laughs> this is this is the same menu that the mods use. There's nothing different yeah. about this menu. Like Facts. it's the exact same menu. So what is what about this is confusing when it for the mods? Like I didn't I didn't I just didn't understand the reasoning. So when they said that, I was like, "All right." This is just one of those bungee things where their philosophies kind of set, and mm -hmm. they're not going to change it. And the only way that I can understand it is if I sit down with one of them and mm -hmm. talk to them and be like, "All right, give me your reasoning. Like, why, why, why do you think this is right?" And uh, mm -hmm. you know, that might happen at Guardian Con or other other things. No, we, so, we, we uh, go, we're going to track them down. You know how we do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but be early uh, and late and night bar mm -hmm. talk and all that fun. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we will pick yeah. them this asses down. That right. that's that's one of my big. Um, my big gripes is that, that mm -hmm. that's got to go. Like I, I mm -hmm. especially because they they flat out were like, we want to give the player this. The, the, we want to mm -hmm. give them the way they want to play, right? But that's yeah. somewhat ironically. And there's been a couple of Reddit posts about this the past couple of days, uh, where it's like mm -hmm. you don't actually have choice. It's kind of this weird illusion of choice where you think Good you point. have a choice, but you don't have point. choice. Uh, you've been limited more, and in this weird way. So <sighs> this is gonna this is a huge tangent. So in go in nuts, Destiny. Man. Uh, I I personally call this the Thanos effect. So this is going to take some explaining. Let's go. Do it. <laughs> so when when you have something, when, when when something in Destiny is super powerful, let's say Mountaintop Recluse uh, Swarm of the Raven, that that meta, right? And we were we, we were we were just melting things. We were destroying things. Mm -hmm. Our expectation and our mindset for how something should be murdered in Destiny is now. <laughs> X speed, right? Like it's this boss dies this fast because I have this loadout with my teammates. Right. I'm gonna get really. It's gonna get technical. No, let's so, go. I love it. So, 
because I know how fast that thing is supposed to die, and I've you know mm -hmm. I've killed whatever boss X amount mm -hmm. of times, Y amount of times, and then they go, hey, all these things aren't stacking, all these debuffs and buffs mm -hmm. aren't stacking. We're nerfing you know auto reloading, which I, I'll give them that one that needed to go. Yeah. But uh, you know all these things are changing, and now all of a sudden I've become this little like school kid on the yard who's trying to like beat up the big sixth grader and it's like well i can't, you know i'm looking like baby yoda out here kind of looking up at my mom like it's it's not it's, it's just it doesn't make sense right and the reason i call it the thanos effect is because you can't unknow what you've experienced yeah, right you can't um and mm -hmm. if you're a new player like you'll mm -hmm. never get to experience that so that's not an issue but as for us as veteran players and as mm -hmm. i think both of you have played destiny one since the beginning mm -hmm. it's it's kind of weird where you go through these phases of like we know how one thing is supposed to work, and then they change it because you know we're we're, mm -hmm. we're monster killing machines to use their mm -hmm. verbiage, mm -hmm. uh, and they don't like that, right? We're we're killing these yeah. things, and some sometimes I I agree with them. Like Recluse Mountaintop, that was too mm -hmm. good; that had to go. But mm -hmm. then sometimes too, I'm like, is it really that bad if I murder the thing that fast? Like, does, it, <laughs> does it really, especially in PVE, right? Like, does it does it really matter? Like, uh -huh. who who does this negatively impact if I if I kill the boss before he does his mechanic? Mm -hmm. Not don't me, get right? Me started on the damn fanatic in that strike. I'm gonna, I'm oh. gonna lose my mind. Again. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want. I, I don't got want my, go I got my shield but, response to you when you finished it. But, Dude. but um, there's one other point. One, one other point I wanted to make. Uh, yeah. I think it was. Uh, what did you say after the affinity? I'm sorry, I, I blanked you here. Know, I think we're talking affinity, then we're talking exotics as far as um mods being able to yeah. be placed on them as well. Oh, I uh, to play devil's advocate. I, mm -hmm. I think that they. They won't. You kind of touched on this. I don't think they will add the mods, the seasonal mods, to the exotics for fear of something getting broken. But here's my devil's advocate point. Let's go. Let's go. Destiny's PVE is at its mm -hmm. best when things are broken. Mm. Hot take. Uh, hot take. Hot take. And and when I say broken, I don't mean like something is not functioning correctly. I mean like we are mountaintop reclusing. Mm -hmm everything to death like that is that is when pve is at its best right because we are we're you're building a monster killing machine right it's it's there's this little known game called diablo 3 i don't know if you guys have played it <laughs> yes it's, it's made by an indie studio um yeah they did a lot of they did a lot of things right like and they did a lot of things studio. wrong mm -hmm. um and you kind of you kind of touched on this with the re-rolling of the affinity actually this is what i wanted to get to so oh, okay. uh so diablo Diablo didn't get a lot of things right at the beginning, just like Destiny. In fact, they have a very similar parallel story, and uh, it, it's been known that um, yeah. Blizzard did help Bungie during the early days of Destiny yes. to kind of, kind of, kind of get them back on track, right? Mm -hmm. um, in Diablo, there are so many different systems and mechanics that allow you to re-roll something, whether it's a stat or an ability mm -hmm. or whatever, right? And and mm -hmm. I'm not saying they got it right the first time on everything. You know, it took them a long time to get where they are. Yeah, absolutely. But Destiny is much simpler than Diablo and I don't see why there shouldn't be like a glass needles type thing or or some mechanic right where it's yes. like where Great. it's like hey I got this um you know mm -hmm. crown of tempest uh that dropped for me but it's it's not the affinity I want let me just pay some cost and let me reroll it right or or have a rainbow That's affinity on exotics like what is it it's it just it just it seems such a bizarre design choice and I I don't understand it. That's why I want to talk to them and like try and understand it. But you, yes. you had a you had a counterpoint to me, so let's let's no, let's I hear had it. a counterpoint to the first part, but I'm with you on the second part. Like yeah. I am in pocket with you on the second part. Like you just took me back to glass needles, and again, that that's to to nullify the pen, penalty of double RNG, right? Give the player it's not the just double. It's more. Yeah, you're more. I'm, I'm being nice, right? It's yeah. more than uh, double RNG. So it's like give us that ability to say, hey, I like especially exotics because let's be real. You know, the drop rate for exotics right now are so, you know, small, you're stuck with what you're stuck with. You know what I mean? So if it's not the affinity you need to your build, you're screwed. I mean, it just, it is what it is. So that's the first part. I'm in complete agreement. I guess the other part, again, I'm chill, chill time. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know how they think, man. Th their whole thing, and they said it time and time again, with, as far as boss melting, and, and listen, it's some of the funnest things ever. I enjoy it. You know, when you got some good strats and, you know, stuff like that, as far as stacking the, the abilities and stuff like that, no doubt it's fun. But I think their fear, it's not even I think, it's I know their fear is us running through content as fast as we are. 
And it sucks as a hardcore player. I do understand your sentiment, Teddy, because it sucks as a hardcore player because you know what you used to be able to do, and it's not like you've been brought down to, to your example, yeah. like sixth grader status against the bully. But for the sake of, you know, balance, i rather it than them creating artificial things like the reckoning. Like, to me, the reckoning was a pure example of they don't know how to control us, so, because we're just, we got these crazy strats and we stacking these abilities and we've got these powerful things. So now let's put snipers all the way on both sides, attacking you, forcing you to do wells and stuff like that. And I think from a design constraint, and maybe they just got to get better at it. You know, they just don't know how to handle things. And I think this new mentality, when it, start, it started from that, and now it's trickling down into this with the exacts. Like, it could be fun. But if they, if they, if these guys come up with these combos, you know what I'm saying? We, we won't be able to, to control it. And we're trying, I think they're in this stage where they're just honestly trying to control and space out the content. And some people are going to have an issue with that. Some people are going to feel it's artificial, but I think that's just where the, I think that's where the mindset is. I'm not saying I completely agree with it all the way, but I think that's where the mindset is. But let me let you, let you go. Yeah. No, I, I, I think, I think I agree with that. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty spot on. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, I mean, I kind of agree with you guys on all those fronts. It's like, but in turn, it's like, it's not a test server. I know they're never going to have that as an option. You have Steam, people, other do test servers, but it's like, could mm -hmm. they, like, I feel like the exotic armor mm -hmm. would be a harder thing to put mods into than exotic weapons, even. Mm -hmm. okay. Because the weapons themselves could be, they're still like, they balance those by damage numbers and mechanics and what they do. And mm -hmm. again, just the mechanics of all the weapon ones, all you do is either get a faster reload by your armor that you put somewhere else, or mm -hmm. you break a shield or break a barrier or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. If you go to the armor side, then you see things like Thunder Coil paired with Oppressive Darkness on a Crown of Tempest, like so, and that's not even the right combination of elements there, but all those things could be game-breaking. So right. I could see them doing baby steps at least a little bit, but... Mm -hmm. I'm also to the point of like the affinity that you have so many RNGs because you have first you have to try and get the exotic. Yeah. That's hard enough. Whew. Then you have to try and get a good stat roll and the ranges on those stats can go all over the place. So that's two already. Three those, is you have to get the. Us out. <laughs> like, and then, yeah, Zer is useless. Um, <laughs> and then you've got where the stats roll. That's three. And then when you add affinity onto that, on, as Teddy was saying, you're like, oh, my, that's like, we're just, mm, you don't, we're past cubing at this point. We're at too high of a power. The exponent is too high. <laughs> it's just way too many multipliers. And it's just like, oh, because, I mean, they say if you want player choice, but you, as you're saying, like the player choice, I feel like there was the little graphic running around. I've seen it referenced in a couple different things. And it's the graphics of the little mouse, like crawling over the top of the maze. Yeah. I don't know if anybody saw that on Twitter yeah, in the last week that. or so. And it's yeah. like mm -hmm. game developers like make the maze and then speedrunners like mm -hmm. rock across the top of it and go all the way over. It's like <laughs> that stuff's always going to happen. Mm -hmm. And there are and I they they look at the datos and they look at mm -hmm. like the people who break down mm -hmm. the numbers and he's not one who even typically breaks the game. Right. But even ones who like speedrun or three man and stuff like that, it's cool to watch. But the mm -hmm. amount of your overall player base mm -hmm. that might actually break the game versus mm -hmm. the people who Casually log in, mm -hmm. don't have a hundred and twelve thousand triumph score. Um, mm -hmm. Hundred eighteen thousand. <laughs> ah, talk about 000. it. So yeah, I didn't know the number. I was just guessing. <laughs> um, but it's like that number versus like all the free people. How many people like look at my video of how to level up mm -hmm. and be like, hey, this is like a new player coming in, just constantly right. still going to come in. They mm -hmm. don't know about half of that crap, and for them, mm -hmm. they just have like. 17 RNG random rolls of systems would be like, I don't even understand. It's not fun. I can't pick what I want to. And then right. how long do you keep them around? It's like making, I think one of the things that shot division one the most mm -hmm. early on was catering mm -hmm. it too much to streamers because it was the economies mm -hmm. and they made them a lot harder to get. Mm -hmm. And then the average person who doesn't play like a crazy amount of hours mm -hmm. wasn't able to keep up with like the crafting and stuff like that because the gear, right. the materials were so hard to come by. And then right. in this, it's like we don't have materials, but we have so many dice rolls that come into it. Mm -hmm. It takes a normal person, like a chance to get one or two exotics, so much longer than the person yeah. who's running 980 Nightfalls with a stacked group. It's like, and so what if they break it? How they want to try and get people into the game, mm -hmm. more and more people into this thing. That's why the, mm -hmm. we'll get to the power level stuff a little bit later, which is a completely different conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but all of those pieces, it's just like they're. 
they're trying to spend too many plates and then they mm-hmm. try to handle the plates to the player and mm-hmm. we and it's just like it's too much so yeah, i mean like i said the only thing i i get I, I i don't agree i mean i agree with you i don't agree with, with necessarily what they're doing i just think it's one of those things where you know in in their defense again i think community is also each one teach one because let's be real if we have a strat you know that thing starts to spread you know it starts to spread i mean think about this the reason why i know they're on that mentality is because this was the first the last couple of seasons where they've been extremely agile when something is broken from an exotic standpoint, like they they got the shut it down button now, right? Right. Yeah. Before, what was the uh, exotic? The, the Telesto Harry, was Telesto was ham- literally hammer the nails off. back in. Yeah, like now yeah. it's like boom, hammering the nail. Good exact yeah. shout out, shout out to Doc Squiddy who we had on the show who had a great article on that 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 whole mentality. I think it's just unfortunately that's just where they are. They, we have to look at their actions, right? Because sometimes they're not forthcoming all, all the time. And their actions, to me, dictate balance, 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 hold on, this can't get out of control. And, and, and again, the only reason why I think I a little side with certain aspects is because I'm going to pull an E, I'm going to pull an E Bontis now. They're an independent studio. They don't have vicarious visions anymore. Look at, look, look at, look at, this is, a, this is an internal fight right now. This is a joke. This is a joke, Teddy. <laughs> Rock with me. This is a, this is a fight. Yeah, I'm, I'm is, actually flipping yeah. it on them right now. They're just a little studio. Though. You know, we have to, you know, they don't have the agility to, to do these things. And they're on their own and we have to accept it. <laughs> look at his face. Yes. Yes. Now you are where I was last year. No, yes. that's not a valid argument at this point is my point. <laughs> Let's go. Mines for developing content, making weapons, and adding all new things into the game. Not in the way mm. systems works. That is just a choice by how big or small the team is. That doesn't mm-hmm. matter. You could mm-hmm. have 100 people. You could have five people. If they make a bad decision, that's mm-hmm. still on however many people are making that decision. For so the, If they blaze through the content, then it's just, you know, they don't have enough time to create new content for the player base. They're never <laughs> going to keep up. That is one thing I think everybody needs to understand is they will never make enough for it to last. They are trying mm-hmm. to get better at spacing what they can. Mm-hmm. They're adding bosses in over the calendar, which we'll look mm-hmm. at. Mm-hmm. But like things like when we're talking about RNG and random rolls and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that is not a choice for the player base. This is great. Continue. I love hearing you go to my side for back. This is awesome. Continue. <laughs> I've got this a... is an internal thing debate we always had. To, it's just funny. Yeah, but this is not a good time for this it's argument. Not app, it's not apples to apples. You're correct. It's, it's not, not apples even to apples. Cl- it's not apples to oranges. But it's apples it's and like It's funny hearing you talk somewhat similar to how I used to do. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. This is a show within the show. Continue, sir. I've, I've, got, a, I've got a second hot take here. Oh, so, hot take it up. So I'll take it, baby. I, uh, I, I mentioned this before the podcast but uh I, I come from a background of, of completion like when i play games that's why i triumph hunt um mm-hmm. it's kind of engraved into my dna because of nintendo and uh, how their games are designed and mm-hmm. you kind of just always want to get everything right and and mm-hmm. at least in nintendo games most of the time the collectibles are usually worth it but um yeah so at, at its core if you were to break destiny down if you were to mm-hmm. strip all the game away all the mechanics mm-hmm. what is destiny it's a it's a inventory management game like at, mm-hmm. at inventory management and resource gathering game mm-hmm. and with that comes time management, right? Mm-hmm. So we're talking about you know how burning bosses and and you know the optimal strat, right? The mm-hmm. the player base will always find the fastest way to do everything Facts. because Facts. the fastest way yields more resources, more gear, yes. more armor, more mats, whatever have you, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. your your time is valuable. So mm-hmm. I sympathize with Bungie a little bit because I know that they it's impossible. No one could do this. No studio could do this where they could test for every possible scenario Correct. that the player base could uh, could mm-hmm. come up with. And and I get it. On one hand, you know they don't want this bad reputation of of the game is broken or something's actually not functioning. Mm-hmm. But then again, too, like mm-hmm. it's just we're just having fun, right? Like it's PVE. Mm-hmm. PVP is a different discussion, and I think that's a mm-hmm. that's a harder balancing act for them, uh, both literally and metaphorically. Mm-hmm. Um, but for PVE, like I don't know, it just just let me let me let me do things as fast as I want to do them. Like mm-hmm. uh, take take the fanatic strike for example, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That boss yep. you cannot melt at all. It's impossible. Right. But right. Nakaris, who has a similar mechanic, mm-hmm. you could melt him if you're fast enough from mm-hmm. from 100 to zero. Yes, that yeah. should just be an option on every boss. Like mm-hmm. if we're if we're good enough, we can skip the mechanic. Oh, if we're not, then God. you mm-hmm. just you just let it go. Like you just do the mechanic and you do it like normal. Anyway, go go ahead. That was my. Well, 
quite right. It's the last one. I know we were, we were killing this e-topic, and this is just such great. Oh, no, I just got that's, one we, we, last We're in point. for the long haul tonight, guys. It is a long point tonight. Yeah, so. it's a long point today. The, the point is, I, I hear you, man. I, I think... It's funny how I've become this bungee sympathizer so hardcore. <laughs> I just think that... I happen, I happen to know a pretty change. good bungee. Bungee sympathizer. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he now works for bungee. I got my corporate hat on, you know. It's just... I, the way... This is what I remember. And I always go back to Vanilla D2 as my reference point. And I'll never forget. There were a multitude of mistakes with, with Vanilla D2. We won't go into that. But I feel... Destiny sometimes. I think the lesson that we have to learn from Vanilla D2 is that when the player base gets what they want, they check out. And part of the problem with Vanilla D2, not saying that everything was easy, but a lot of things were accessible, right? So what happened is a lot of the player base, they come in, you know, they were getting raid weapons from Hawthorne, they were doing a whole bunch of things. And at that point, the philosophy was like the items or whatever it was instead of some of the challenge of pinnacle activities and stuff like that. And I think it's just this, it's tough balancing act, man. It's, it, it's tough because I think what happens is, look, I love melting bosses. I loved everything you're saying today. Like everything you're saying, it's fun. You get in there, you got the optimal strats and people are going to find the optimal strats. But I, I worry that when we knock all these stuff out and everybody's getting these pinnacle rewards, What's the incentive to keep playing? I think part of what makes Destiny's great is the chase. Hundred percent. Right? The you know yeah. the getting you you go into town. You're like, man, how did Ebontis get that? What did he do for that? Right now, do I want it to be like Anarchy when I'm looking at Destin Legary and he's like, I still haven't gotten Anarchy. This is my 55th scorage run. You know, there's this there yeah, <laughs> has to be. I, there I, has I, to be, I agree. Yeah, there still has to be balance, but I think. That's the only reason why I do side with them slightly because I know how I am. When I have everything, I'm kind of done. I'm kind of like, okay, you know, I'll tune back in when, you know, the next thing is added. And I, I, I do like it. Is it artificial? Probably so, you know, th them stretching it. But it, it's a tough balance. Man. I do feel for them. On the PVE side, I, I definitely feel for them. It's, it's so tough. They're, they're a pendulum, and they... They always tend to swing one way too far, and then when they when they correct, they always swing the other way too far. But those rare instances where they hit that middle point, it's that it's the magic, right? It's it's yeah. that it's it's where destiny shines its brightest yes. when they when they get that when they get it right. And I think that's that's why we always come back because it's it's that hope, right? Like maybe they yeah. got it right. Um, yep. But. Yep. Anyway, valid, if we need to move on, we can we can yeah, move we on. We've, 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 I was yeah. like, I'm sorry, man. This was I was just like, great. no, this is this is this is great discussion. This is always mm -hmm. the good stuff. Yeah, it's like for me, it's just the point of. I know you're saying they want to manage our time, but and he says mm -hmm. it's a little forced. But I'm, in my mind, it's more than just a little bit forced. Mm. So it's to the point of, as like you watch some of the people that. I mean the des the Destins out there counting his anarchy mm -hmm. drops and stuff like that. That's going to be one of those. Somebody else had like a cross stitch made because he had more than 100 runs, still not getting an anarchy, which was brutal. But not even that. It's just like at the point we are at now, uh, you guys are both saying, it's like, why do we play video games at a very, very basic level? To have fun. Yep. And to a point of when certain things in this game are not fun, that, in, that gets at the, one of the deepest issues where Destiny has some trouble with its balance yeah. and is it a balance of your time versus the other hey should this boss have six immunity phases even if i hit him in the head with a four times honed <laughs> shot no <laughs> like if i take off a chunk of his health and it's half his damn bar and we hit him all at the same second hey mm -hmm. maybe he dies in two immunity phases like certain things as you said knockers you can knock him out if you time it right and if mm. you've actually learned how to do that why punish the player for getting that precision guys it's like okay we're running as a team three two mm. one Bomb, oppressive darkness, ward cliff coil, brr, done. Like, mm -hmm. if you can get that together, how many teams actually put that together all the time? How many average players go through a strike bro, on the other each side? One, each one, teach one. You know how this community is, bro. Once, once the secret get out, everybody's running through. Put, put, put how, that uh, uh, mentality. Hold on. But, you take but, that as an everybody. No, you but. take that as an as a everybody how big of this everybody of the population are you talking about because you have hardcore people that actually pay attention mm -hmm. to the reddits the youtube valid. threads valid. and people valid. that just log in and play valid 
you, you, you're valid if you're looking from a percentage standpoint from the whole. But again, I'm going to apply your same mentality with your your favorite event. You're the dungeon guy. Could you imagine Shattered Throne, guys come up with a melt strat, right? Everybody's running around with Wish End, everyone's running around with that stuff. What's the incentive to go back in there? Again, I'm just thinking from this standpoint, if we're blazing through content so fast. Loot. That's their fear. Loot. No, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. But I mean, it, it's like, it, usually, again, with those type of strats, we're going to get the loot very fast. You know what I'm saying? And again, I, I, all I'm saying is I just remember the reasons why I checked out of D2, Vanilla. I had everything so fast. They, I didn't even step in the raid on certain aspects. I had stuff, but that's another story. But that's now, okay, on. let me flip it to mm-hmm. the other side. Do mm-hmm. you think you can get anything at this point? Like, be specific. What you mean? Like okay, any... you, you want an exotic with a intellect, discipline, role, and arc affinity. How hard is that oh, yeah, going no, to be you're for right. you to no, get? Absolutely. No, you're right. So it's like, is yeah. it, has it, as, he, as Teddy said, the pendulum, how mm-hmm. far away has it swung when you had everything? Mm-hmm. Now it's almost impossible to get exact, to go for that thing that you really want. But I think those are two separate arguments. One versus difficulty versus this terrible triple quadruple rng but okay so here's the thing is like Mm -hmm. if they have swung so far that it's really hard to get the quadruple rng Mm -hmm. why do you have to make it still Mm -hmm. really hard for me to go through the activity if i can burn a boss faster and i get two more chances at said drop when Mm -hmm. i have six thousand times one in six thousand times if Mm -hmm. it's hard to get it then make me then don't hamper my efficiency if it's easy to get if you want to if they want to keep you now this is where we we meet now now i'm with you no. If they want to keep this, if they are so hell bent with this affinity and armor, and they don't want it to go, then I do agree. Yes, they do need to give us at least multiple options. Kind of like almost when Menagerie did that thing when they had you know that week, and it's like three or four yeah. drops. And it was like it was raining out there for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because even though you got those drops, you still weren't guaranteed the rolls, the right. affinity, or whatever it is. So in that, I'll meet you in the middle there with that part for sure. I was like, I still, if it is uh, one, go ahead. I, I, yeah, uh, I used to talk about drops for Menagerie, and uh, this, this is kind of a mini story. So I uh, mm-hmm. there's the specific sh- the shotgun Imperial Decree, a specific role that I was yes. chasing a uh, yes. pre pre Guardian Con. Yes. I uh, I made an Excel sheet after the first hundred. Uh, <laughs> Not surprised, uh, but I I, I I had about 500 drops mm-hmm. uh, chasing one very specific role. Uh, yes. The barrel didn't really matter. It was uh, oh, you assault- did trench barrel. Uh, no, oh, no, the barrel, the muzzle. Oh, the barrel. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Assault mag, trench barrel, full auto. Because Woo! Full yep, auto, I was going for it too. Full auto increases fire rate by 10%, and assault mag increases fire rate by 5 uh, mm. And then trench barrel, obviously. Uh, and this is when uh, Threat Detector and Ikelos were still kind of somewhat used. Uh, Mountaintop was at its prime, so, mm-hmm. you know, lesser. But it was better than both those guns yes. uh, with that roll. I did it over 600 times. Mm. I still don't have the gun. Mm. <laughs> that role. Mm. Uh, so there is something to be said about, yes, Menagerie was very rewarding, and mm. uh, it was great that it was dropping all that stuff, but if mm-hmm. the game is somehow actively working against me mm-hmm. to not give me the thing I want, then that's uh, mm-hmm. yeah. that hurts a little. Yeah, hey, Makes me not want to play the game. These are valid stuff, man. It, it's that pendulum, like you said, that the hardcore player you know, desire versus the they, they i feel for them sometimes versus the casual fan that wants to get in it's tough it's tough i definitely nothing you guys are saying is wrong you know what I'm saying i i just think it's i just feel for them on certain aspects because this is a very difficult game to balance i agree yeah mm-hmm. uh anyway i'm just gonna leave prescott's comment out there just because i gave him a hard time about that yeah, go for um it. but yeah so like we obviously got off on a big tangent there, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's been a journey since Shadowkeep started. We have this brand new armor system. Yes, sir. We've got stats, we've got rolls, we've had different strikes, we've got exotics that do and don't come, and Xur is still just the tentacle face man of uselessness occasionally. Um, <laughs> all those things happen. I like that. Continue. Tentacle face man of uselessness. Uselessness. Yeah, that's what I'll title my <laughs> that new video. That should be like on. his title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But guess that's, that's, the new, that's the new Zer video title. He's gonna know? be a little useful now going forward because mm-hmm. you get you buy that faded M grin every week and it's it's gonna be armor mm-hmm. if you have all the mm-hmm. weapons. So that's mm-hmm. true. That's true. So, you know, see, he'll be he'll be seven shards. Once a useless. week you get a roll out of how many exotic pieces of <laughs> armor do we have? Yeah. <laughs> it's disgusting. Let it go. 
out. I love his disgusted in your armor situation. It's great. Uh, I just I wanted good armor for so long, mm-hmm. and I it still has potential, but it's not there yet. Not there. Yet. That's that's I guess where I'll just leave it. So. Uh, but yeah, back to Season of Dawn after Joys yes. of Tangents, and that's what yes. we do here on... Uh, so I don't know if you know, Teddy, our podcast used to be called Flashpoint. Mm-hmm. Ah, I did not know In that. In theory, it was <laughs> meant like Flashpoint generally is, you know, Flash being quick. But then when we had over to our podcast, we're like, well, we're on a long point now, and that is exactly what this is today. So literally what's going on. Anybody who's been around for a little while, we passed the Flash a long time ago. Mm-hmm. So next, um, in the stream, we also got the shortest preview of the calendar ever. Mm-hmm. Yes. Here's the calendar. There goes the calendar. Go find it on Twitter later on, <laughs> which was also kind of odd. So mm-hmm. I want to kind of walk through the calendar with you guys. Uh, I'm going to have it up on screen. So if you guys are chatting in uh, Twitch, I will get back to y'all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the calendar, I kind of want to go through this one for you guys, see what you guys think about it. And then we'll get into the TWAB stuff towards the uh, end. So one mm-hmm. launch day. We have Saint-14 Serenatus. We've got the new Sundial PvP mode. And the Sundial, this is where they start to mention, I guess, our PVE boss rotation. Mm-hmm. PvE, sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Sundial Nyrule, the Hollow Voice, is our first one. Don't know what he looks mm-hmm. like. We can see a couple of the others. Free to all Destiny 2 players, we get the new seasonal artifact, which is not in the season pass, by the way. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that's just going to come from Osiris says, here's a lantern. I'm not entirely mm-hmm. sure. Uh, but is not in the season, which I'm honestly fine with because playing seven levels of the season pass and then finally getting an artifact kind of was annoying, so I'm glad hopefully it just comes earlier. Mm-hmm. Solar subclass updates, PvP mode elimination. We'll talk about your PvP stuff, don't worry. Mm-hmm. Uh, new PvP map, Tangled Shore, and Mars obelisks open. They have told us mm. nothing about those obelisks. And those are for everybody. Yeah. Oh, some oh, of them you... are. Uh, some of them are for everyone. Mm-hmm. Right. The four obelisks are for everyone. All four so of them? The free here. Yeah, and then the Nessus and EDZ on the 17th is also for everybody. Oh, okay, you're right. Yeah, my bad. No, nope, you're good. Um, so, honestly, you have people who are like, hey, I've, you know, I haven't bought the season yet. What do I get if I don't buy the season? It might be a nice thing to tease one of these things as well. What's an obelisk or this thing? And they may have a secret, but it's starting right on day one. So, mm-hmm. some people are going to see it, some aren't. What do you guys think, as that's kind of the thing we haven't seen yet, what do you guys think these are going to be? There's going to be four, four different planets. What do you guys mm-hmm. think this is going to do, function, mechanic-wise? What do you guys expect? Let's go, Teddy. What you got? Um, I would guess it's probably just their their version of the world event this mm-hmm. this season. So kind of like the uh, the wolves on on Mars <laughs> or, or whatever it was from Destiny 1 and, and the Hive, yes. the Knights. Um, I, I, I know people have been asking for that for a long time for that to come back. And we, we sort of got that with the Forges, with the um, the Shielded guys. But they were, they were, they yes, were, t- yes, yes. They were tied mm-hmm. to a quest and after you completed the quest and killed them once, you kind of never had to do it again unless you're mm-hmm. doing like a bounty or something. Um, mm-hmm. So I imagine it's something like that, but maybe a little more in-depth. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. They, they did, I'm surprised they didn't say anything about it. I'm Maybe they want us to discover it. Maybe it's a puzzle thing over a combat thing. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? Mm. Cognito, as you take a sip. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't know. This is... This, let's just get the elephant out of the room. This is the most obscure roadmap ever. Like, I'm, I'm just like, what is going on here? I mean, I'm not that I'm, like, upset with it. It's just it, it, there's no information. There's no reference points. So the only thing I can think about is kind of like what Teddy said. Like, he's got to be similar type of world events and you know with this whole obelisk thing and then as far as they're obviously i know we're getting to the you know the sundial and stuff like that which feels very boss you know fighting ish (laughs) you know um i don't know you know i'm saying again my only concern is just that i just we we know me and you've talked to you before and we know most likely this there was going to be a raid Right. Mm-hmm. We know most likely it wasn't going to be a dungeon. We just had that. We have to be respectful of the resources on hand. You know, again, the only the only fear I have is when people are this quiet, how much do you really have to offer? And I'm I'm a little concerned. I'll be honest. I am a little concerned. I'm, again, this this stuff could be great. You know, it, it, I could all, all my my fears could be unfounded. It's just, you know. It, it feels light, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and here's the other thing. I want to shout out Daddle, too. You know, we got to be real here, too, in a standpoint. This is a $10 
expansion, oh, yeah. so to speak, yeah. right? And I will say this, as much as my fears is and stuff like, you know. It's as much as a damn it, ornament. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, don't get me started on that. Don't get me started. You're right. You know, shout out to the Iron Banner guys that got the $10 Iron Banner emote. <laughs> you, you know I had I'm a lord. I got to do it. <laughs> but, um, you know, in, in fairness, I have to say this. I think we are all in agreement. I haven't spoken to Teddy on this, that, you know, season of the undying we could have missed and been okay with Shadow Keep if so technically it didn't exist, right? We we happy we got everything, but it was very light. So in comparison to Undying to Dawn, not Shadow Keep to Dawn, Season of Dawn, but Undying to Dawn, yes, this is you know seems to be way much more. You know what I'm saying going on here, yeah. and you know that that's where I'm at. I'm just gonna I'm gonna temper expectations because my fear is this stuff may be very light. <laughs> but where yeah, I mean, you if you at? compare Undying, you go, mm. what do you have? You literally have different public events, and you have one arena, basically. Right. I mean, that's mm. literally all Undying had. Right. I'm going to go spend a lot of time in that thing for the damn title, but that's going right. to be a sad weekend for me. Anyway. Right. My condolences. Um, <laughs> he said my condolences. Whole, <laughs> whole lot of, my condolences, yeah. A whole lot of Netflix and Netflix mm-hmm. and game. Uh, but yeah, it's like if you start pulling stuff out of this calendar mm-hmm. of what is going to be actually content. So mm-hmm. take Sundial, Sundial, Sundial. Those are three different mm-hmm. bosses. They could have different mm-hmm. mechanics, but that's all off of there. So that's one row off the top. Mm-hmm. You have the Dawning, which is for a month, which most of mm-hmm. us will be done in about a week. Right. So it's that's still already. more just a holiday event. If you guys can hear my wolves, sorry, but apparently there's mm-hmm. someone outside. Crimson mm-hmm. Days, PvP, still mm-hmm. probably shouldn't advertise with Sparrows if they're not coming back with Sparrow Racing League, so get that yeah. crap off if, of there. If SRL doesn't come back, I'll riot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, like, the fact that they have Sparrows on here twice really is, well, like, poor advertising if it's yes. not. So, so last year, they did the same thing. The, the picture had... The sparrows, the but they sleigh. were advertising the sleigh thing. Yes, and, the and, sleigh. And when it didn't come, I was like, "It's been two years." I, lo- <laughs> I love SRL. Uh, Talk I'm, about I'm, it. I, I played I played Mario Kart competitively, and SRL Woo! is just Mario Kart without the yes. BS. It's, yes. There's no items, right? So it's it's pure skill. Like, yes. uh, with some minor, there's some minor. That ever, makes but... me use my controller, so you all know. That <laughs> would make me use my controller. Because I was actually pretty good at the at uh, Sparrow Racing League on PlayStation, so yeah, I, I played Ooh, I played a too. lot of Sparrow Racing League both years on on Destiny One, and uh, mm-hmm. if if that isn't SRL, like, oh man, <laughs> put a snowflake in there and put a heart in the other one and get the sparrows out of the damn pictures. I'm sorry, but yeah, if it's, I don't expect it to be Sparrow Racing League, but that is the biggest tease that they could do to all like, the Sparrow Racing fans. Can we give fans. Amanda a job? <laughs> She's what fixing the same sparrow for uh for <laughs> <two years. laughs> Can she Poor at least Amanda have sparrow Howard. rotations in there? Can Ugh. she like build one every season? What if she just had one be like, hey, I'm gonna give you this long like triumph that you gotta do over the course of killing five hundred thousand enemies over the course of the season, I'm gonna yeah. use all those parts and build a sparrow this season. Just mm-hmm. something random for her, because she's just so <laughs> sad over in the tower. Oh. Cade's gone. Oh. The faction guys aren't really doing oh. anything. They've left the building or taken a nap. So go to that side unless Zer's there. Yeah, and I rarely I go for him <laughs> that he's dead. Yeah. So it's like continue go, to go grab your yeah. No, that was it. Just I had I had to comment on SRL because it's it's my mm-hmm. favorite, one of my favorite things in Destiny. And Thanks. if it doesn't come back, man, it's gonna hurt. I feel yeah. you, bro. I feel you. I'm with you. Man. So love take SRL. the three bosses out of the right of this page. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can take Iron Banner, which is probably not the only Iron Banner. We'll cover that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Uh, Take Crimson Days. Take the Dawning off of there. What Mm -hmm. new content do we have? The Sundial, the hard version, and whatever Empyrean Foundation is, and that is three months. So it's like if you you have a PvE mode with potentially Mm -hmm. four different bosses, Mm -hmm. maybe cool because the Sirens are always cool. You have a difficulty Mm -hmm. to it, and we have exotic quests, which... Maybe cool. We'll see. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if you're wondering if it's light, if this is what we have, they haven't told us what the final three weeks are. So I'm going to save mm-hmm. that for another discussion, little point here in a second. Mm-hmm. I think you're honestly sus- you're suspect of like, what is this ten dollars season? Mm-hmm. You're looking at it. Yeah, it's, and it's like it is. Yeah. So I don't think they're. I think they're tempering expectations in the stream 
may not have been intentional, may not have been their best stream, but I think that honestly may be a kind of silver lining for them to temper what everybody's like. Hey, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's kind of about what I thought. Like people didn't get too high over the top, I think. No, we do have uh, Save the Legend, which is going to be cool. But go ahead, Teddy. Uh, let me let me ask you guys this. So so now that we've had uh, this will be our fifth seasonal drop of mm -hmm. Destiny Two. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys prefer this kind of seasonal time gated uh, yeah. system, or or your first? <laughs> do you prefer the Destiny One where it was like everything was front loaded with the first three six months of the season, and then we get like a, like a spring updated update, and then nothing after that until the next expansion? How do you like which one do you prefer and why? You don't even know what you just <laughs> you you I, you are so cool. I love how he just does it like. You just opened up a whole Pandora right there <laughs> because this is something me and him, me and he have debated so long. You know what I'm saying? And it's so funny you brought that up as a question. Of, I know he's, and you got to be dying when you heard him say this. <laughs> oh, I literally was pointing at you because you're yeah. first. <laughs> oh, we, this is the battle. Yeah, this is the battle. Um, Yeah, I mean, it, it's, listen, <laughs> I'm always going to be a fan of expansions. That's just how I. That it's just how my mind works with Destiny. And it's just how I've been conditioned, you know. In E's defense, I do understand why seasons, so to speak, had to happen. And as far as uh, from a studio standpoint, and as far as cadence and content, you know what I mean. But you know, put it this way: the f the last seasons that we've had, right? Which we had Black Armory, Drifter, Opulence. Out of all of those, Opulence was the only one I felt satisfied with, for the most part. Opulence was the one that I felt, if seasons can replicate that, I won't complain, right? Now, granted, I know every season can't have a raid. I know every season can't have a dungeon. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. But um, it's tough, man, because as a Destiny hardcore player... I love playing this game all the time, right? And now it's like, you know, as a season, you know, it's like tune in, come in for a minute, chill, do a couple of things and activity, and then I see you later. And it's weird. It's weird playing other games. And I, I know, E, we've gone back and forth with this, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, for me, I would love nothing but to play Destiny all the time. You know what I'm saying? But I understand also the logistics of it. It's hard, right? And now, the, again, there's no Vicarious Visions. You know, there's no High Moon. This is all them. They are the the big independent, you know, um, studio. I just wish, part of me does think, though, what if they still kept the old cadence and went to expansions? I don't know, man. I, 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 I almost might say, hey, I'd wait. You know what I'm saying? If if they were very they were packed heavy, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, you wait for a bit, you go through a drought, and you know, after Shadow Keep or whatever, and then it's like, okay, come back at the top of the year. It's it's tough, man. It's tough. I see you, Vagamondo, with the slander. Stop it. <laughs> I see you with the one character warlock slander. I see you. But here, at the end of the day, man, it, it's it's a tough thing. I I I personally like expansions. If if you're gonna put a gun in my head, I will always say expansions like shot to me shadow keep represented the traditional model yeah right and i love that it was tons of things to do i, I love my mind overwhelmed and even if there's a drought now and let's just say the next shadow keep kind of thing was like at the top of the year you know what i'm saying or you know spring or whatever i'm kind of okay with that but it's like this model here i struggle because you see the potential right but I know I'm not getting a raid. I know I'm not getting a dungeon, you know. And then we just gotta hope that this stuff is really good. And that's all. I'm hoping for Opulence, but this don't feel like Opulence. That I don't even know where this is at. Like this is this is somewhere between Armory and Drifter, maybe. I don't know. So no, that's I'll give be it to E. Drifter. <laughs> Probably yeah, above Drifter, right? You know what I'm saying? But I'll give it to E. You know, I can go on forever on this, you know, kind of thing. But I'm curious to see where he's at now if he kind of maintains the same stance. I mean, mine's been you. You have nicely turned the tables because <laughs> when you step away and you're like, "Hey, I'm playing Outer Wilds and you love it," now you like you're doing that while this content is going on like this. And right. if you had your bigger, I know it's like now if you had your bigger breaks like we talked about, then you're like, "Hey, let me play it all." Okay, let me go play my other games. Hey, let me come back and play all this new stuff. Okay, I'll go try something else for a little while. 
-hmm. like the bigger breaks are sometimes healthy for some of us mm -hmm. because there's this like <laughs> destiny is like never gonna win this battle yeah no matter what they do if they do the seasons and they're only one studio and they don't have 6,000 developers in there that they can afford to keep running and put out some crazy amount of content, it's never going to be enough. Right. And then if there's a drought, then people fall off. And then how much do you do keep going? So they have basically swimming uphill both ways in the snow. It's not going to work well. Yeah. And they're trying to make the most of it. If I had to choose, I mean, I think the expansions typically do offer more. And that's kind of like, we're in the same boat, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm actually surprised you said that. I was like, because there are times the seasons are cool. Because if they get to a point where the seasons are like Luke described, Ada walks in the tower. We've got more interaction with that. She leaves. There's this narrative connection. And it gets to that dream that we hope for. Mm -hmm. Then that has the potential for the narrative. If there was content to go with the narrative, then I think that would actually give it a really cool ding, 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 feel. Ding, ding, ding. And mm -hmm. then, like, those are smaller. We know they're smaller. They keep the story going. It's kind of fresh. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the big thing that comes next fall. Yes. But if the content does have lacking points, like Drifter, uh, Black Armory was cool, big lag, and then Opulence mm -hmm. was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's just the consistency, and it's hard for them to probably, okay, what's this next narrative thing we're going to do? What's the new activity we're going to build with it? Is it always just one new activity? And then do people get tired of still running strikes and gambit and other things? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you think about the titles as like for Teddy out there, it's like, we'll give it back to you in a second. But it's like, I'm thinking about this title more than half of this title grind was me running strikes, mm -hmm. playing gambit matches, collecting the ritual weapons for the season. That doesn't make me undying. That just means I had no life for a little while. That's literally mm -hmm. all that one's going to mean. And that's where it's kind of like, some of the so. things they, some of the things they make you do in this game, make you almost a pre, a, like enjoy the seasons less. If it was just like, mm -hmm. hey, the season's kind of cool. There's this thing, go kill a million vex. Hey, you've done this thing. Maybe get a cool emblem for it. As opposed mm -hmm. to go get 1.8 million kills and strikes, 675 <laughs> arc ability kills, yeah, 675 yeah. melee kills. Where I had to yeah. go use my hammer. I got a really fun combo on that one, by the way. Um, <laughs> I ended up using for it was the soul. So it's the vanguard emblems that you need. Mm -hmm. And you had, like, the nightfall points that you need or whatever, but you also have mm -hmm. to get solar kills, but melees. Mm -hmm. I accidentally had my dune marchers on, and I was helping uh, helping somebody out with a video. Mm -hmm. So I had those on, and when you sprint, you get the little melee, like, static electricity. Mm -hmm. But then I was trying to get solar melee, so I was on my titan, so I was throwing my hammer. Well, when mm -hmm. I threw my hammer after sprinting, the lightning would spread from where it hit. Yeah. So it actually was this kind of chain effect that made it go a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And I just like, that was actually kind of fun when I stumbled into that point. But mm -hmm. it's still, I had to go do like one lost sector over and over and over and over and over. And it's like, they, they almost make it to the point where it's like a season I might've enjoyed. Mm -hmm. By the time I get done trying to keep up with everything that's in it, I probably mm -hmm. almost look down upon it because of what it made me do. It made you do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let's bring it back to Teddy. Cause I can, I'm, uh, I'm so glad you asked this question. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is, yeah. You, you poked at a really, really you big, poked um, at it, yo. Uh, we, we tried to keep you putting our swords bear. away for a long time. <laughs> kind of got to bring it back to you, man. Kind of going to that, that, that grind for the triumph. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so like I was saying earlier, the, the best players and just the community at large will always find the most optimal way to do something. Right. And so mm -hmm. you're talking about like, you have your dune marchers on, you got this ability going, and like when I was working on Undying, I knew going into that I was like, this this is an unreasonable amount of things that I have to do. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, I don't have to do them, but I'm, I'm gonna of, of things that you know I got I got to get all these ability kills on the moon. I got to get all these ability kills uh, in strikes, and they're not retroactive. Mm -hmm. And I, and and all these weapon kills in Vex offensive that makes me a complete detriment uh, to the people <laughs> I'm playing with. And and they're doing the same thing too. So then it just makes the activity take twice as long and and um it it just creates this weird environment of like and and i know that i'm like in the super minority when it comes to triumph hunting so this is like a, a super small or a super it's a major gripe uh, of a small amount of people but like i'm i'm doing the altar of sorrow triumph right now for getting 500 waves which is the final triumph mm. i need for the for the season to hit max score mm. 
And if you think about it, 500 waves is just a lot of Altar of Sorrow. Ooh. It's a lot of destiny. Uh, yeah. uh, I was I was crunching the numbers last night while I was playing mm. it, and it was something like... Uh, you have to do 400 waves, because it's 100 to wow. get to rank 4. But So 400 waves, and it was something wow. like 25 hours of playing or something like that. And I'm like, am I going to do this? Am I really going to do this? Mm -hmm. Is my... and, then I, and then today I was thinking about it right before we started the podcast, and I'm like, man, my... My time is really not valued when it comes to this stuff. So mm. going back to the undying thing, because this is where I'm leading into this. Let's go. I feel like when it comes to those kinds of triumphs or those kinds of accomplishments for a quest or something, that they're not really – and I don't know this for sure. This is just me speculating. Mm. But I, mm. I, don't, I feel like they're not testing how long those things take because yes. let's, mm. let, let's be real here. Not everyone mm -hmm. is, is as good as we are, or even right. there's better players than us, but like, mm -hmm. we're going we're gonna to try and do everything as optimally as possible. But the Absolutely. average player, if you look at it on a bell curve, the average player, mm -hmm. they're not going to get undying. They're not going to get yep. those triumphs done. They're not going to get yep. those kills done in time because they're just casually, I uh, hate using that word, but they're just casually mm -hmm. playing the game. Thanks. And I think that when they, they talk a lot about, especially at Guardian Con, they talked a lot about um, respecting the player's time. And mm -hmm. it's one thing to say it. It's another thing... <laughs> When I go into the game and you show me this title that I'm I'm gonna get it right, like I'm gonna go get the title, and it's like, all right, this is gonna take me um, 15 hours of X offensive. I'm gonna try and not hang myself, and uh, let's, let's do this. <laughs> like, uh, and and it it's this weird double edged sword, man. Like I always complain about it, and then they get me they get me every time. <laughs> so. No, you, you nailed it, man. I mean, I think, like I said, I think the completionist in us or the hardcore makes us do it. But again, I think you nailed it. I think they're there's still some discrepancy of missing a boat with the whole the time investment. And like, for example, like a title I really want that I know most like I'm not going to have is Blacksmith. And it's just like, oh, that you one's know, rough. Yeah, bro, that like, one's rough. it's like, and think about now, it's like 500 kills with Jetun, 500 kills with Izanagi. And then it's like, well, now the forges rotate. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's like, it, it, there's so many different layers. And it's just like, at the end of the day, you know, I rather, I forgot who said it, another content creator said it. I rather the triumphs be tied to like something like what Ibantis does, which is like, okay, you know, you soloed a, a, a thing, like something that required a skill involved with it, yeah. as opposed to just a repetitive action of, you know, just on elongated repetitive action, 500 kills. Like, are they really looking at the metrics? As, to, as in reference to the time investment required to do that because that is a lot and like you said the casual or who you know they're not going to be able to do that but it's not because it really is difficult it's just you got to sacrifice your life to do this <laughs> like, like, like that's just really what it is it's not yeah, that it's undying hard. is not a title of skill it is not yeah. a title of skill to any i mean randy's throwing mm -hmm. knife you gotta get 2100 glory i've heard mm -hmm. if you might Shadows of my brother, he knocked it out. So I'm like, oh, I'm salute. hoping it goes relatively smoothly for me, but maybe yeah. he's just better anyway. Yeah. Um, salute but to like, Momentum Control, the... though. Yeah, Momentum Control. Yeah, no, salute that, to Momentum Control. I knew he was doing that. That was let's amazing. Yeah, Momentum yeah, Control was clutch. Okay. It's back this week, which was a nice little touch. And, um, mm -hmm. But most of that is literally mm -hmm. just time. And that's like, I mean, as I forget who said it in chat, uh, I was dying when they said it. They're like, it's undying is because you're going to be zombies mm -hmm. by the end. You're gonna be yeah. zombies because you're just like <laughs> you're just spending too much time. You just died in destiny. It's just that's the point of like respecting the player's time is one of those things they still have to consider when it comes to some of these things. For you to do 500 waves, I think mm -hmm. we get the point mm -hmm. that you've spent your time in Altar of Sorrow. Right. Like that. That shouldn't be triumph score just to be like, oh, we got 100, 200, 6,000 waves later. This right. man lost his mind. Um, <laughs> not cool. Now, to, yeah. play, to play devil's advocate to my own point, I mm -hmm. I completely understand that not like I'm not saying every title should be, you know, super hard to get or or right. difficult. But the thing that makes Undying kind of unique is that it's, it's the first of its kind. I, I guess yeah. the 2019 one was kind of like this too. But it goes away. Mm -hmm. You cannot earn that title. You cannot earn it after either. the fact. So Facts. so personally, I would rather have a easy mindless title to grind if, if it goes mm -hmm. away at the end of the season versus like if you told me to get unbroken three times in one season and then it, it goes away forever, <laughs> I'd be like bro. Yeah, yeah that's tough. That's All tough. Right, like, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, I, I see where they're coming from. So I'm hoping that this season's title 
uh, mm -hmm. is a little bit better. But we, we've kind of strayed away from the, the roadmap. Mm -hmm. I don't know, let's, let's, let's get back yeah. on track, hopefully, here. Yeah, yeah a little true. bit. Uh, I was going to ask bit. real quick, uh, while I get the roadmap back up, what do you guys think the new title will be called? Because I have Ooh. one idea. I don't, I don't know. I, let me hear what you guys think first, and I'll, I'll think of something. Mm. You want me to throw gonna, mine out? Because yeah, mine might be out. good. No, go uh, for it, man. You got it. Yeah. Saint. <laughs> Just Saint? Just plain? Just saint. saint. Wow, you gotta be a saint, dude. Okay. <laughs> so it's undying. Yeah, that's actually good. interesting. I don't even know how to counter that, man. Like, because dawn don't... doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's like that doesn't fit. Like dawn or that's just it. Now I'm yeah, the reindeer. Dawner, like, uh, so it's like I've been trying to figure out what it would be. Dawn, disciple Sun. of Osiris. Disciple. I mean disciple. that that actually. That'd be better, but now you're just sitting there with Brother Vance like a crazy person. <laughs> That's right. Get your fanboy on. Uh, I don't know. The um, em Empyrean? Is that how you pronounce it? The, oh, the, Empyrean. The Maybe, yeah. yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah, I could, yeah, I could see them might. doing that. Um, yeah, that might be it. I don't know. Saint, Saint actually seems pretty It seems pretty good. We'll see. Cross my fingers, because that actually would be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Saint, Saint Cognito. <laughs> <laughs> I think they ain't doing Saint. Yeah, it'd be. I think it's just for 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 uh, for all the religious sakes out there. Yeah, yeah they, they ain't staying away from that. I'll see Either way, that. Um, mm -hmm. so we got the obelisk for free. Those are pretty early, and we've got these four bosses. And if you look at, so we're back on the calendar. If you guys are mm -hmm. following along, since I can't really put it on screen, mm -hmm. so we have Nyrule, the Hollow Voice. Mm -hmm. And when you looked in the trailer, at one point you did see one of these guys who had no yes. mask on. Cabal yes. are nasty looking without their masks on, mm. by the way. They're gross. Aren't they, the um, though? Aren't they like a different race? I always forget. The yeah, the, or Cabal? The, the Scion, well, they are Cabal, but they're kind of like the grunts from Halo. Uh, oh, okay. They're, gotcha. they're, 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 they're enslaved by the Cabal. They're, they're yes. servants. That's what I remember. Um, so they're, okay. they're not technically the same race, but they are yeah. like Cabal, like the Covenant. Uh, gotcha. I, might, I might be botching that a little bit because I'm not like super familiar with the lore, but mm -hmm. uh, I think that's that's what it kind of boils down to is, mm -hmm. but but they do look nasty. <laughs> without yes. their, their so got, it might be him in the trailer, but then mm -hmm. we go to Sundial Oslek, the Sky Piercer, mm -hmm. very much looks arc related. Yes. Uh, then we've got the Sundial Tazarok, the Sun Eater. Gonna guess mm -hmm. he's solar related. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now process of elimination. Mm -hmm. Nyrule might be void, and the only reason I say that is because when we look at the bottom on Inotom, mm -hmm. Oblivion's Triune, when we see the piece of the trailer with the broken, shattered glass and all of that stuff, mm -hmm. he has that monochromatic color scheme to him. He doesn't have, right. he's black, white, and gray. He is not blue, mm -hmm. red, purple, orange, nothing. Mm -hmm. He is basically nothing. And I'm wondering if he, because we have this big break of. Legend of du Sundial, which is the hard mode, which is no matchmaking. That one comes out about a month later. Mm -hmm. And then about a month after that in February, mm -hmm. we get the Empyrean Foundation, which looks like we're going to the past. and mm -hmm. But it also looks like the portal to the Infinite Forest is closed. And then we've got this guy who might be in this broken timeline. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of wondering how they use the Sundial, the transitions, the bosses, and stuff like that. And I kind of wondered if you guys had any had broken it down this far, had thought about, like, the implications of, like, mm -hmm. Solar Arc Void and this other... I don't know what he's going to be. So I didn't know if you guys had thought about that that much. Mm -hmm. Are you looking forward to the different bosses? Do you think it's, like, one one week one, we get one. Week two, we get another. Week three, we get another. And then six weeks later, we get the last one. It's also a weird yeah. cadence. Yeah, I mean, I'll jump in. I, I think for me, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't mind this aspect. I, I will shout out the Hunters, though. Hunters, y'all gotta oh, make a request that y'all better get your, 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 what you call it, your, your, your marks with that. Remember, remember the classic, cloak. the sun dance, the yeah. cloak, the siege dancer? They need, the hunters need to get some siege dancers style cloak. This is the perfect opportunity for Bungie to reward hunters with this. So that's all I got to say in reference to the, the cosmetic aspect. But as far as the bosses, yeah, I, th I think you're, you're on it, E. You know, it's gonna be probably different um, elements. You know, I, I remember them vaguely saying something about, you know, traveling to different locations that this DLC will not, I mean, expansion will not be um, tied specifically always in Mercury, and that yeah. we will have to go different places. I don't, I don't know if that's tied within the campaign portion or also in reference to that, but I, I'm getting them vibes. I'm getting them vibes. So, you know, that's that's what we shall see. You know. That's, Teddy, that's, any I'm thoughts? With that. uh, I think you kind of hit it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually looking at the Black Armory roadmap because this is uh, similar, similar dates 
Um, Black yes. Armory launched on December 4th. Okay. Um, and then it ended on December, uh, or shortly, I'm sorry, ended on February 5th with Crimson Days. Uh, there's a lot less content in the Black Armory roadmap, but it's kind of it kind of lines up. Uh, I can I can put it in our Discord um, thing so you guys can look at it with me uh, here. But mm -hmm. I got it, it. I found it. it yep, I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of it kind of lines up pretty similarly to uh, mm -hmm. Season of the Dawn. Season of the Dawn actually has a little bit more uh, mm -hmm. going for it than uh, than Black yeah, Armory. But in terms of like right. in terms of like spacing, it's uh, it's more or less the same. Like, yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, forge, 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 boss, 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 I, boss yeah. dawning, I've, no raid. Yeah. I was pretty opposed mm -hmm. to the time gated model when they when they kind of started introducing it with Taken King and and after that it got it got a little more intense. But as mm -hmm. I as I've gotten older and and I've I've been playing a lot of Destiny, I kind of appreciate it in a weird way because it's yeah. it's almost like all right. It's like my schedule for Destiny. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's <laughs> yes, like, oh, yes. okay, this thing's coming. I can either ignore mm -hmm. this or you know tackle it the next week, or I can I can mm -hmm. do it. And and if you know if it's not good, then it's fine, right? Like, and I usually am unable to play immediately on Tuesday when things launch. So, mm -hmm. you know, go on Reddit, see what people are thinking, and it's like, okay, I don't have to do this, or I can wait till Friday to do this, or whatever, right? And so, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think you nailed it. It seems like each one is a different boss, different or different mm -hmm. type. Um, Hopefully it's like Menagerie where they're they're pretty different and the mechanics are a little bit challenging. But given that they're mm -hmm. all scions, uh, I'm not holding that. I'm not holding my breath for that. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. E? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's kind of we'll just kind of have to see where that lays out. I do want to say some people are wondering, <laughs> hey, how come Iron Banner is only on there one time? Is it going to come back? They throw that thing in every which other place they mm -hmm. can. I'm sure it's going to be. On the 14th of January, I'm sure it's going to be somewhere yeah, in the middle of, like, the end of the season. It's going to be happening more often. I agree. But I really wanted to pick your guys' brains at. Mm -hmm. We know of three exotics from the season page, mm -hmm. which is the other piece of all this crazy amount of content that we've been looking at. Mm -hmm. One of those is a sidearm. That's where I'm going to start. So I wanted to ask and see your guys' thoughts about our first new exotic of the season that we know about, mm -hmm. Mr. Sidearm. What do you guys think? Are you excited, or are you like, no oh, crap? Like, I'm, what uh, I'm pulling it up right now, so I can. I, I looked at it earlier when they when they launched this, and uh, if you want to go ahead, uh, Cognito, you can go ahead. Uh, go, yeah, I mean, listen, you know, <laughs> tempering expectations here. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, Rat King was one that I had high hopes for, and you know, I, it just never, even with the buffs, it never kind of hit that note that I thought. It should. I, I love the concept, though. I love the whole, you know, Rat Pack, Six and the Crew kind of yeah. thing. You know, again, you know, but, you know, Devil's Run, Ruin, uh, I don't know, man. You know what I'm I don't know. I'm going to hold out reserve judgment until it comes out, but I'm not. I, I, we we got to talk about Bastion. That's the one well, I'm yeah, ready I'm for. I'm saving that for last. Uh, yeah, this, this right here, like, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be nice. Like, yeah, it's the sidearm meta has never really taken shape. But again, if it does something cool, then all will be forgiven. I'll eat my words. But right now, I'm like, all right, that was like the only. We'll see you when you see you. That's that's yeah. that with you. The yeah. only freeze frame I could pull from the trailer is that it will be potentially a solar sidearm. That is literally all because mm. I could see like a solar wisp in front of it. That's yeah. my only guess. Outside of that, I know nothing. Yeah, it, it, listen, shout out to Cryptic. He said in PVP, I can get a gun out. If it can outgun recluse and shotguns, it's a good sidearm. Yeah, I mean, as long as if it offers some type of functionality that really is cool and unique and powerful, then got people will use it. But no. you know, for, I'm, I'm with Kyle. Like, unless this, <laughs> he said, unless this sidearm is making me a great dinner, I'm in the same pocket. Like, if it's not making me, it needs to do something. Like, it, it cannot be some basic, you know, kind of perk set. It, it gotta be unique. You know, because you know yeah. the community how we feel. But where, where you at? What you thinking? Uh, I just got to see. I'm with you guys. Like, I'm not holding my breath, but it's mm. a sidearm. It's been a while. Mm. Just have to see. I was so going to try and play two. devil's advocate, and I, I, I can't. It's, <laughs> it's a sidearm. You're like, I'll put my effort I, somewhere I, else. I, it's not I, worth I, it. I pulled it up right as you guys started talking about it, and I was looking at it, and I'm like, how can I make this work? And then I really thought about it, and I'm like, I can't argue for this. Like, it's a sidearm. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I mean, I get. I guess if it does something like really cool, then then mm. maybe. But at the end of the day, it is a sidearm. And, 
it's just not going to be good. Like uh, guilty by association. Yeah, yeah. like, like uh, I think the last good sidearm we got was Last Hope and in, in Vanilla D2, and then Trespasser and, and Destiny One. So uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, what was that one? It was a it was a good one back in Dragon's nice Promise. Game. That oh, God, nah. don't you start with the, with the potato? <laughs> Arguably we the worst really exotic in Destiny oh. Yeah. All oh, right. Well, so, okay. Second exotic. I'm saving mm -hmm. Bastion for last. Second one. I yeah, exactly. I'm gonna make you. I gotta make you wait for it. Gonna make you. Uh, mm -hmm. Gotta tease you a little bit. Let's go. So symmetry. Our scout rifle. This oh. does seem to be the thing we saw in the trailer. Am I wrong? Mm -hmm. I think so. It's a the it's scout a... rifle. The PVP trailer when it's like. Shoots him in the head a couple what? times after what? landing, what? and then he smashes the bottom like a honed edge shot. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. it turns into like a fusion rifle. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. Yeah, this nice. is. Yeah, can't tell you. I just look crazy. Yeah, go. I'm curious what you guys think on this uh, one or what uh, how it could work. <laughs> if it is a scout rifle, which I based mm -hmm. on the photo of the three guardians holding it on the page, mm -hmm. it looks like it is. Um, no. Man, that looks awesome, but. But they make good trailers, right? And let's be honest, you're not going to be getting a seventh yeah. column every day. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that. so, you're right. You're like, right. Like, yes, it looks awesome, and it sounds cool, and the music's pumping, and it's rusted lands, and you're like, oh, man. But but I, I don't know. When it comes to exotics, like, like I said earlier, everything for me is about time management, how fast I can do things. And if this exotic mm -hmm. doesn't accelerate my advancement of loot in some way, then mm -hmm. not going to put it on, no matter how cool it is. Cognitive. Yeah. I mean, look. Any hype they, from that trailer? I, I, I have been suckered into the hype. When you listen, if you all you gotta do is have Shaxx yell out, "What? What? I'm excited!" What? You know what, oh, what? You know what oh, come Seventh on, who, column. Oh wait, oh, five, five, real quick side note. Um, all you Titan mains, I understand Saint Fourteen is back. I get it. I understand the love. I get, but we're not going to disrespect the great Shaxx. Reddit, I've been seeing some very slanderous comments about, you know, Say 14 needs to kick Shaxx out and it needs to be Say 14. Well, no, the order that they get kicked out is Zavala goes first. Yeah. Shaxx and Saint can figure out who's, who's like yeah, number one and like, number two, but like, yeah, Zavala's unfortunately not <laughs> not not holding the strong man title right now. Hey, I mean, they, they they call Saint Fourteen the greatest Titan that ever lived. <laughs> so uh, I'll lose the contest. I was gonna Listen, say that he did, he it. did actually say that. So I, I get it, but we're not gonna disrespect the great Shacks. All right, we cannot disrespect. I, as a warlock, but that is the Titan. My favorite, one of my favorite Titans. You know what I'm saying? I, I just love Shacks, but I just feel there's a lot of Shaq slander going on. Now that this the new guy is in town, he's back. <laughs> All right, anyway. so in a in a room. You lock Saladin, Shax, and Saint. Who comes out alive? We know Saint going to win, but I'm rolling with Shax. <laughs> I'm rolling with well, Shax, man. Hold, hold Listen, on, he saved on. the city. Okay, he broke on. protocol. He saved the city. Never forget the lore. He, it, he, the reason why him and Saladin, Saladin and Zavala is tight like this, but Shax didn't listen, broke the formation of protocol, but he's responsible for saving the city because of his action, and now he's being penalized. But anyway, I'm done with my, my, my lore rank. Go ahead, Teddy. In, in, your, in your example, if Shax and Saladin team up, you think they could win <laughs> against St. 14? Because they're both pretty smart titans. Like, they're not, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. Shaq's, Shaq's a little abrasive, but Saladin's, Saladin's pretty, you know, he's, he's, down, he's down to yeah. earth, right? Like, he, he knows what's mm -hmm. going on, right? Like, you mm -hmm. think if they teamed up, they could they could take him out? Or same 14 still going? They're all going to punch each other at the same time, and the universe is just going to collapse. But Dragon Ball Z style? Thing. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. I mean, anyway... Well, we, yeah, the shades defense. We digress. Though, <laughs> we digress. They, it took like a nation of millions just to even stop them. They had to figure out something. The whole vex. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But a shout out, shout out to to Saint. Just one of people. You know, don't don't forget. Don't forget. All right. Shout and then the big question mark mm -hmm. of all, Bastion, sir. Mm -hmm. Thoughts about this thing? Besides the fact that it is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that thing. That, that is a, oh, that's a beautiful weapon. That is, that is a beautiful weapon. Reminds me of uh, the Trials Year Two weapons, the the non adept ones though, the the blue ones. Yes, yes, yes. Complete Trials Two aesthetic. Yeah, it looks cool. Now we have we confirmed weapon type. We've officially confirmed. I've it's heard it looks fusion. like an auto, but yeah, it doesn't look like a fusion. It looks like an auto rifle. Heard. Unless they're just saying a fusion is that other the scout rifle, but we know scouts one. Mm -hmm. And he uses it as a scout rifle in the PvP match of Symmetry, like the guy, the Titan in the middle, holding it. Not Titan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Titan. Mm -hmm. um, 
That's why people have been saying it's fusion a lot, but I honestly don't know. I don't know, man, but that, listen, I'm excited just off the aesthetic alone. That thing looks cool. The only thing we see in the trailer is the point where he's looking through a scope and there's like a symbol of the eagle and like a sun and then mm-hmm. it like rotates and like splits apart kind of as mm-hmm. he fires and then it goes white and you can't see anything. But mm-hmm. there's a frame. Those two kind of like line up and then split. I have no idea how it's going to work, but that's the only thing that would kind of work because the sight on it is not enclosed. It's not like a fully mm-hmm. enclosed scope. Yeah. And it looks like it's just kind of got one of those projection scopes on it. So I think it's that two seconds you see it in the trailer because it's got 14 mm-hmm. in the like the little uh, illumination. And then, but yeah, it's like as they never fire it. So I have no idea what yeah. it is. I don't know. Somebody said linear fusion, maybe. I don't know, man. It is very unique. I'm very curious where, where they go with that. But I yeah, I mean, shout out to Houndish and him showing up the video of like sundial linear fusion and it's some weapon. Don't even know. But yeah, yeah, there's big speculation. And I believe Linear Fusion is on the mod list for weapons, right? Yep. This, this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're focused a lot more on range and precision. So yes. that mm-hmm. pretty much covers the calendar. But we have yeah. this giant gaping hole at the end mm-hmm. where there's three weeks of nothing. Yes. I wanted to ask your opinions on that before I say mine. Because I already threw mine in a video. <laughs> Sorry, Banner. <laughs> oh, three Lord. weeks of Iron Banner. Oh, yeah, just Lord. they're like in case uh, you didn't make max level, just pinnacles and and the the bounties rotate on a daily basis, so you can get pinnacles daily. I, I can I can see the trailer right now. Someone's DJ is gonna come out. And he's gonna be like, "Yo, dog, I heard you like Iron Banner," and there's just three weeks of Iron Banner. Like that's. <laughs> <laughs> Please, can someone get Deeds to say, "Yo, dog"? Yo, dog. I love it. I would love that. I would pay money for that. I would oh, lose my mind. Don't, don't, don't do me like that, Teddy. Don't do me like that. I mean, don't, you, don't, you know there's going to be at least one week Iron Banner in there, right? Oh, we know. Like, oh, like, yeah. We uh, know. It, it's as usual. And I, to be honest, I kind of like it when the season winds down with nothing at the end because it mm-hmm. kind of gives you this time to catch up. And, you know, if you're missing something or something mm-hmm. you're chasing, you can kind of sit down and be like, all right, this is what I need to do, and I have this amount of time. Uh, it kind of goes back to that, like, I, I hate and, and, and like the – the, yep. the calendar because yep. it, it gives me this yep. weird schedule right like it's mm-hmm. it's like oh you know if i'm behind i have this time and then if i do you know so mm-hmm. i don't know what do you guys think what do you, what do you think is gonna if they slot anything in there you nailed it. secret you trials nailed it, maybe oh don't you say oh. <laughs> they, they won't <laughs> don't, do don't, it don't tease his heart yeah they won't do it, it. i gotta get to it because teddy opened the pandora's box i'm sorry it's just listen i i know trials realistically is probably not gonna happen this season all I'm saying, shout out to Fallout Play, shout out to Ask the Cross, the PvP community. All we're saying is, you just last season dropped a trailer talking about renewed focus, right? Now, granted, we got to see what this, you know, the next week is going to bring when the full patch notes or whatever. But it's like, Ebon, don't you owe me? Oh, my God. You know how I'm about to get No, I'm talking about Cryptic and Chad. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> Shout out to Cryptic. But it's like, man, it, it's, it, it, it just saddens me. And I, I, they need to do something. It, as a PvP player, a person who loves to jump in the Crucible, it pains my heart, Teddy, that I don't have those pinnacle rewards that PvE players get. You know what I'm saying? Like... I, you know, if I invest my time now, I grant they they alluded to something in the in the twelve that they're gonna think they've been thinking about. There's gonna be some adjustments, but I, I just need to see it, man, because at this point it's just unfair, especially with no pinnacle activity with trials. So if trials is not coming this season, one we got to be rewarded for time investment more than the mats, more than you know all that other stuff, and it it just, oh, it, it, it really they got to do something, man. You know, now all will be all will be forgiven. If you jump on the stream or you make an announcement and you're giving us, you know, like a hard and fast date as to when this is coming on and what you're going to do with trials and stuff like that, you know, but for right now, I just got to judge it as the the PVP renewed focus has been kind of a failure, you know what I'm saying? And they, they need to really get at that, you know what I'm saying? And I know we got the 12 and stuff, but it, it's just frustrating. It, it really is frustrating. I haven't played PVP at all because i'm not doing it for for power for, outside of the ritual weapons once you got your ritual weapon done there's no reason for me to go in there because i'm not getting anything for the pinnacle grind i'm not doing those activities for you know for powerful gear so that that's just literally where i'm at with it i just really really hope it comes sooner than later just this renewed focus so let me let me ask you this then since you're the the mm-hmm. pvp guy here mm-hmm. and i i 
generally I only go into PvP when there's something I need, and then I eject as soon as I'm done with whatever mm -hmm. I'm doing. So, mm -hmm. do you play Iron Banner? Do you like Iron Banner? Yes, I play it because I actually look forward to it only because, and I've had this discussion with E, when I, I've become more of a solo player recently, and it's the one of the only resources I can go in solo and get pinnacles. True. So it became, it added value. And, but don't get me wrong, if it didn't really have that, you know, I really wouldn't be playing that as much. And it's not really frequent enough. You know what I'm saying? So that's just where I'm at. So, if they, so, so my follow-up is, if they, if they added a title for Iron Banner, would you be more incentivized? Lord. <laughs> if he ever could be you Lord. You Lord or my name already as Lord Cognito? <laughs> you got me. You won. You won, Teddy. You won. Because you won. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I've seen this suggested quite a bit on Reddit and, and the people I've talked Preach. to. And, and uh, I, I think that would do a lot for the PvP community, even Preach. even though it's small, right? Like, uh, yeah. as a as a title hunter and a triumph hunter, uh, mm -hmm. there's only one PvP one. Like, there's only one, and and it's the hardest one to get, uh, both by time and skill needed. Um, Facts. And I, 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 even though I'm not a PvP person and I, I don't mm -hmm. necessarily like playing PvP that much, I, I think it's important mm -hmm. that they, they have an avenue for something to chase, right? It, it doesn't mean much, but it's something at least to, to well, at least until trials comes back, right? Or, I or appreciate whatever. Appreciate you empathizing. <laughs> appreciate. You. I, I think that is fantastic. To be honest, again, you, you give us again. I'm one of the few people who listen. We know. Try, I mean, PvP has issues, and the PvP, you know, no dedicated servers, and we can go on for days about that and cheating and stuff. But you know. I kind of do like the sandbox. I mean, it's far from a D1 player to a D2 Crucible player. I just like the fact that there's multiple weapons. I don't feel like there's, you're always locked in. Yeah, Recluse is good, but I always, I feel it's counters for everything. You know, and I, I still like the sandbox for the most part. And I would love to get in there. But yeah, like if you throw a title in there, man. Oh, yeah, like an Iron Banner title. Or my other suggestion is comp. Comp is in this weird place. And it's like, I love the solo queue stuff. But how about... Give us a pinnacle in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's oh something. my god, yes. Like, yeah. comp is supposed to be. There's no trial, so we have to look at comp as the you know the pinnacle activity for PvP right now until trials comes back. And the fact that comp really has nothing except tied to a couple of tri uh, you know a triumph, one triumph, and maybe a couple of weapons here and there that they try to make you go into that direction. There's really nothing there and it, it saddens me shout out to black wings he said hey man cognito i'm a solo player as a solo player man, I, I i really wish they would at least give that to comp so I'm, I'm gonna hold out hope i did see some tea leaves you know we discuss in reference to i think damage uh he, he, he mentioned it they're looking to do some shakeup so i'm curious to see how far they go with said shakeup go ahead e. Uh, no, I mean, was like for you, seriously, like pinnacles and PVP are so far mm -hmm. from each other. It's kind of sad. Yeah. It would be nice. Like, what if it's like, okay, so to give a little more population there, it's like, what if you had to just get like 10 wins for a pinnacle in comp? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Like you don't have to win them all. There's not like a streak required right now. Love just it. a way to, you know, if you want a pinnacle and you want to go play comp, that's a way for you to do it. Right. I mean, just something. As you were saying, a title for a little incentive was perfect. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Another one that's not just completely brutal. Be yeah, a little bit of PvP pinnacle. I mean, people reset their valor, which, you know, not isn't always the hardest thing. But if you reset your valor, you ought to get something for it. <laughs> Yo, what are you dying at? Kyle, he said, I feel like whenever BV team is in a meeting, it's two guys in a big room and many empty seats. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was hilarious. Oh, yeah, PvP's oh like, hey, guys, so we've got... No we got the whole team together. Let's talk about PvP. Yeah, all two of you. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, that you, is brother. one thing a lot of people have said. It's like this renewed PvP focus. Like, actually, we may as well bring it up now. Uh, I mean, you have a renewed PvP focus. Damage had a good, like, reply on Twitter. He got pretty candid about it. I don't know if you guys had a chance to read that one yet. No, I didn't. Did you? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so he got pretty in-depth just saying it's like, We've tried to, we've had the new director for solo queue. We've changed mm -hmm. some of this stuff up. We've worked on some balancing. He kind of had gone through some stuff, but it's also the balance of how many resources they have and things of that nature. And there's a lot of things that they've got. So he had a decent candid answer out there. Mm -hmm. It's not the answer that we want right now, but it's the right. one we just kind of have to deal with. But as you're saying, there's smaller things like titles and a little pinnacle nodule that's not, like, I know some stuff's not easy to program. I'm not a developer. I'm not going to claim to be a factual. Mm -hmm. But I have a hunch some things are pretty not difficult to add in. Mm -hmm. Like 
10 wins for a pinnacle or yes. iron banner title checking boxes and tracking yeah. things like those things can't be overly hard to give the pvp side something else like yeah, yeah if there was a lord title you would have just been oh. two, like a double thumbs up to you oh. don't even care what else is there but if the title said lord you're like i'm done i'm done this is the oh. best expansion ever best season ever don't even care like they could 500 kill me to death with any weapon i don't i'd be in there <laughs> <laughs> and, you'd, and you'd be fine I'd be in there, brother. Again, it's just, it's just it's just for the sake of balance and fairness. Like, again, if you're a PvP guy, Destiny 2 is really not the game for you. Like, it's it, it's it's so weighted the other way. It is just like, man, I, and I love to play PvP. You know what I'm saying? Is it perfect? No, but I, I do enjoy it. And, um, you know, I've, they got to get to it, man. They, they just got to get to it, you know, so. Hopefully, I'm praying and holding out hope. Isn't it? Holding isn't it weird hope. that they marketed D2 launch as a as a competitive game? Yes. Isn't isn't that a bizarre <laughs> world we live in? <laughs> oh, how the tables have turned, flipped upside <sighs> down, and rotated to another. Yeah, it's very yeah. strange. Yeah, but that's what I got. Uh, so yeah, the calendar does. It looks reasonable. I mean, for a ten dollars season, it's definitely going to have different bosses. We'll have the Empyrean. We've got a couple exotic quests. You've got new. Mercury weapons with random rolls, the time lost weapons they talked about, uh, three different exotics. I still have an yeah. issue. I'm just going to say it right now mm -hmm. that by buying the season pass, you just get an exotic right then. Yeah, I, no, that no. still bugs me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Quick question, uh, T Teddy: Do you think uh, Perfect Paradox remains legendary? Uh, yes. Okay. I, I think, uh, and I, I don't know. Obviously, I'm just speculating here. I don't know what the story is, but I, I think that. Uh, we aren't going to break the timeline in any way, and we're not going to save Saint Fourteen. I think I think we're going to pull him from some timeline, and we're going to fulfill the the perfect paradox and end up giving him the gun, because that's mm -hmm. what has to happen, right? Yes. It's, it's what yep. they what what, what they've laid out in the lore, right? We at some mm -hmm. point we have to give it to him, uh, so that he can go and and fight his final fight, and then he can give us the gun, and and mm -hmm. you know live the perfect paradox. But I I think it'll be legendary. I there I think there might be like a a quest or some sort of them like giving it to you uh pretty early on quickly so that you don't have to yes. go do that awful mercury uh, <laughs> quest adventure thing um ball great yeah time. whatever whatever another, they did another time suck great great adventure like amazing amazing adventure probably the highlight of christmas Osiris was was yes. good doing the the getting the perfect paradox but it's like gated yes. behind this super bizarre weapon yeah. forging foundry yeah. thing and 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 yep. uh it just you know, I think they'll just give you the gun flat out if you don't have it already. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. I agree. I hear you. I hear you. you curious, See how? Yeah. Uh, oh, on the gun? Yeah, just think Perfect Paradox, the, the form. I think you guys pretty well covered it. Yeah, I think it'll be legendary. I don't think they'll make it an exotic in itself if it's already been a legendary as it is. It's so weird, though, because... Perfect paradox exists in the game already. Yeah, I just, I'm curious yeah. to see how they handle it. It's just random. This is roles. again where the whole time wave rewinds. Yeah, fixing some things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Much yeah. less we may not fix it, but they may fix their timeline to work with. <laughs> yeah. I, I was just so. talking about the weapon itself, being that we have already acquired said weapon. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, we we'll continue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean that pretty much does wrap up the mm -hmm. season look. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it says, here come the bullets. Mm -hmm. So the bullet points for the TWAB. Uh, I'm going to save one topic till the end, so you'll notice the very obvious one that I skip. I want to mm -hmm. cover a couple highlights, though, because they did actually fix a couple quality life things that I have to say big thumbs up to. Yeah, absolutely. So the exotic engram and faded engram have been collapsed into a single new exotic item. When opened, it awards a new exotic if any remain to be collected. So you're working a checklist if any. Otherwise, it contains a random piece of armor. This is perfect. I know you guys can't see me, how... but uh, double thumbs up. Ah, <laughs> there we go. Billy Spirit, baby. Like, this is one of those, like, somebody, like, look, okay, how can this work the best? Done. They nailed it. Like, they hit the checklist, and then you get armor rolls. You don't need weapon copies anymore. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Destin and IGN World and anybody else. Anarchy's going up to 10%. He gets a whole five percent. I literally saw Paul Tassi tweet something out saying, "Hey, this is really cool." And Dustin was like, "This is not the most important thing." And literally tweets back the anarchy percentage up. That was his reply. I was like, "That is classic." So that's, that's classic. Funny. Yeah, shout out to Dustin. I love. I I don't mean to laugh at his pain, but it is a funny. Oh, follow. I, I laugh at it. 
<laughs> I know that's your boy. I, I, I just think so, that's hilarious. Seventy-five more runs, and I get to throw him an anarchy party. So, <laughs> <laughs> or what? Are, no, six, sixty-five more runs. Has, has Team Concern been helping him with this? Uh, no, well, he's he, he just right. L, he just L, I mean, he'll ask me sometimes, but uh, he'll he'll right. LFG it usually, and uh, right. sometimes I'll hop in and help him. And most of the time, he just kind of gets it done on Tuesday, and then cries a little. And <laughs> 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 Shout out to Destin a few times. Oh, yeah. Really cool, dude. Oh, uh, escalation protocol is getting a change. So Ooh. the Wave 7 chest no longer requires a key. Chest can be opened every successful Wave 7 attempt. Each time it opens, the chest awards one piece of armor until your character has all of them. Afterwards, it is a random piece of armor. So fully changing up how that works. Uh, the weapons will still... Escalation protocol weapon drops were not touched and will still... Uh, cumulative stream, boss drops, that stuff. So the mm -hmm. weapons are changing. If, if I could comment mm -hmm. on Escalation Protocol please. real quick. Yeah, please. This change took way too long. <laughs> way too long. Facts. Like, the the uh, the bizarre system to get the key charged, oh. to get the armor, oh. was like, and you can only do one a week per character. Yes. And it was like, what a what a strange odd and I, I wish this had come. This was like, them stretching out Curse of Osiris or no uh, uh, Warmind. Warm I, I guess, but I mean, I don't know. I, I, it's good they're doing it finally because I think the EP armor is one of the coolest looking armor sets. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if people are actually gonna go back and play EP now. I don't know if that's yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, you're right. And that's um, one of my favorite activities too. I yeah. love EP. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was minus cool. no five, minus five no bosses too. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. If they could just put matchmaking in there, perfect. It'd be great. That's arguably one of my favorite. If it just had matchmaking, mm -hmm. weapon mods are going to be five hundred instead of five thousand glimmer. All right, all right. Bonus. Double thumbs up. Yep. Repeatable bounties at the gunsmith. Also, double thumbs up. Uh, merge the strike crucible gambit uh, gunsmith weekly bounty to field calibration. Mm. So you're not I forced just, into anything you don't yeah, want to do? Yeah, that's me. I haven't, I haven't finished the, the, that bounty because of the trifecta for a while. I just want to play one or two things. Yeah, and then we did get some changes to a couple of subclasses as well. Thunder Crash had increased Ooh. damage, uh, in-flight damage, and flight time, mm -hmm. which doesn't hurt anything. Thunder Crash could always use a little buff, especially mm -hmm. PvE, I would say. It probably can always never hit hard enough. Uh, fun fact, there is a uh, metal triumph towards zero points in PvP for uh, killing... Why those even exist, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Killing, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's two or three people in Thunder Crash while you have flown for five seconds. Minimum of five <laughs> seconds. Um, wow, that's random. And, oh, man, that triumph sucked. Mm -hmm. That one was... You uh, got it, apparently. So, I what, got were you it. just, like, waiting in PvP with, like, an arc sniper and being like, here he comes! No, no, no! You, you you have to be the one doing the thunder crash, killing uh, two two or three people. I think it's two people. Uh, but you're in to, the wow. air. Uh, no, you have to be flying for five seconds. Oh, you minimum. have to fly oh, so for the five length seconds. of distance for five. Yeah, okay. and I think I think it's the super hard. I think the super That's only hard. lasts like six seconds. And towards the end, you oh you, you, you start you start falling. So it, oh, yeah, it yeah, became yeah. difficult. Yeah. So I already have the triumph, but big thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> so Looks extra flight a, time is good. Yeah, uh, flight time and base damage. Night Stalker way the Pathfinder vanish in smoke. At a short period after invisibility is applied, we're firing weapons or performing mm -hmm. other actions will not break invisibility. And then Void Walker handheld supernova adjusted grenade charge time so it lines up with the animation and FX. This should make your it favorite. feel more consistent. I hate that friggin' it's thing. Your favorite. I hate handheld supernova, but I'm not going to get into this argument. We go, we go, we go. That'll be a tangent. We'll, no. You don't want to know about that one, Teddy. That's a that's a Titan warlock beef. No. I totally don't down. use handheld supernova ever. I mean, not once. I don't. I don't, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but, but you know, the Titans, if they want to complain, this is what they complain about. But it's cool. Uh, a couple uh, crucible maps, rusted lands. We know is coming. Woo. Dead Cliffs, Legion's Gulch, Retribution, and Solitude. I think the ones they pulled are coming back. Yep. Yes. Yep. And then they're removing Imper Emperor's oh. Respite, Equinox, Firebase Echo, and Vostok. There's a couple in there that I actually kind of enjoy. So I like Emperor's Respite. Nobody likes Equinox. I, I don't like any of those. So if I could, if I could pat the man or woman on the back that removed them, <laughs> I, I would. Wait, 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 hold Thank on. you, Refresh sir me. or madam, for your kind work. <laughs> Refresh my memory. Which one is Equinox? Give me a visual picture. That's real quick. that's the that that's like the nine? the nine map that's an L shape. Oh, that can go in the bushes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> blue. Yeah, that's out. Okay. Firebase. Wait, Firebase Echo is the little cabal one with the big circle, right? Yeah. Uh, I like that one. No, one that that's Which Firebase Echo is the one on Earth, I think, or is that the the one with the drill that's a, a B, I think? Or I might be getting that mixed Firebase up. Firebase Echo is the one where 
There's the shielded tunnel in the upper deck where the heavy ammo sitting up at the top, and point B is below it underneath. Oh, yeah, that map like can go the... in the bushes. That map sucks. <laughs> I can't remember what this map is. I, I just Googled what? it. I, I know what you're talking about now. It's, it's got the two yeah, shields at the it. top with the long yeah, hallway the two, and the like heavy. Like the long, like, tiny hallway with the shield, like, windows, the shield mm -hmm. windows that you can see up through, but you can't shoot through. Oh, but you can that, jump yeah, out yeah, and then drop yeah, on yeah, me. yeah, I hate that one. Yeah, right. And that's yeah. the one where B is underneath. The, yep. the, the, the B is cat straight walk, below so to speak. it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh B yeah. That one going to bushes. Oh, you're right, Teddy. I yeah. forgot about that. That, that one. That and Vostok is. Yeah, yeah. That one was made Vostok. for uh, for breakneck specifically. So I think that's why it suffers yes. on other. Yeah. That uh, one can go. I don't uh, like that breakthrough. Um, and then Vostok is the outdoor snowy one. Iron Banner one. That's the Iron Banner themed. One. I, I yeah, that's the one I, I, where Saladin used to be at. In D1. Yeah. I flip flop on that map a lot. I I like it or I hate it. But I'm in the middle. Okay. So what what happened to the map that was the big circle? And I, it was it was like cabal themed. It was like you know, it was red and it had the big circle and um, damn they took it away. I thought that was what Firebase Echo was. But you, I see what you reminded me of. But oh, and Emperor's Respite is the other one that's leaving, and that is the one that is. I like that. Uh, that's the callous one. The yeah, the callous I love the way that one yeah. looks, but that map plays awful. Yeah, yeah. it is weird for playing. Oh, so, so two more topics, guys. I know this no, has been no a long worries. one. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, mm -hmm. This has been a long point tonight, but there are a couple yeah, other sorry. topics because we've been into it. So mm -hmm. I, you guys can tell me which order you want to talk about this. Eververse mm -hmm. and then new level power cap. Let's go with which new one level. Which one do you want to tackle? New, new level first because I think Eververse is yeah. going to be a heated, yes. heated topic. Yes. Oh, I think this one might be too, but all right. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Powerful and Pinnacle reward caps. Power cap is up to 960 from 950, so plus 10. And Pinnacle cap is 970 up from 960, also plus 10. Thoughts? Hmm. I, 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 I kind of expected this. Um, mm -hmm. I, I didn't call it exactly, but I was like, they're not going to do like a plus 50 um, mm -hmm. again. So I figured it was going to be like a plus 10 or plus 20 or something. So mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense. I kind of don't like that this sets the precedent for the, the 10 Pinnacle power of this season basically mm -hmm. being pointless because if i don't want to grind for it next season i'll just immediately get that in like a week with all the powerfuls mm -hmm. that are available to me unless they're changing the amount of powerfuls available which i don't think they will mm -hmm. um and because of the recent change to pinnacle drops i think this makes it way too easy to hit it but i also think the old way was really bad so it's, it's kind of that pendulum problem right where it's like you've had it too hard and now it's mm -hmm. too easy um but uh, i don't know it makes sense like Hopefully the activities don't necessarily scale that way. Like a 980 nightfall on day one uh, is still is still <laughs> fine, right? Because we're gonna lose the artifact, so all that power yeah. to go from the artifact goes away. But I don't know. What do, what do you guys think? I'm torn. Yeah, I'm torn. I was like, man. I want to know your thoughts because I have opinions too. But I yeah, want yours really, first. Mine's a short. I, I'm torn. I mean, again, this is, it just it messes with my old school destiny mind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The old school way of doing things and you know things change but i mean powerful cap you know and it, it, what what teddy the part that teddy said is the part that i it needles me a bit about the artifact subtracting and then we coming back and we're just doing that and it's just like uh, i don't know you know what i'm saying you know i see both sides of it i, I shout out to tassie shout out to lono those guys i know they were going back and forth with, with this debate on how it would happen, you know, I am surprised it did because obviously our destiny, my destiny mind is is conditioned. You know, we're supposed to have a, a fifty point or whatever, and, and this is this is definitely them changing. You know, um, again, the only thing I struggle with is just at the end of a season, artifact taking that extra power away, and you know, I don't know how I feel about it. And then obviously we got to see the pinnacle cap, if it, being that it's just up to nine seventy that would lend me to think or a guess that is they're going to keep that cadence with the uh the amount of the minimal amount of um you know pinnacles and, and that is something you know e I, I really struggle with especially that i've lately converted into being a solo player because you know outside of the raid which there's no no raid outside of a dungeon which there's no new dungeon um you can solo the dungeon though yeah i mean but we'll we have to we have to see how to, yeah you can tell it we have to see how also shadow keeps pinnacles i'm assuming are not going to be pinnacle anymore they have I, to I, be 
I don't know. I'm, the raid I'm, in the dungeon, I see. There's no way they take those away. Otherwise, there's how else are you going to get up there? Those I, are your I, main pinnacles outside of Iron Banner. I would hope so. I would definitely yeah. hope so. You know what I'm saying? I, it, again, it just I want to see how they handle the distribution of pinnacle rewards. That's yeah. my biggest problem with this new the start of this new season into into dawn. So I'm cautiously I'm a little scared, a little scared, but we'll see how it goes. I'll be looking to you. I know you're ready to go. Chop it to be get it. Uh, so for me, this one's interesting just because I've been wondering what they're gonna do and. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a Twitter thread that I read. Not going to say who it was. If you got mm -hmm. a chance to read it, cool. If you didn't, it's gone now. But basically the idea here is we have, they're trying to walk a line and balance it between two. Mm -hmm. So you have your hardcore people yes. who grinded up to 960. And Lono's theory was like, hey, the pinnacle grind when it was ones before it was twos and got easier. Now they see that it's easier. Okay, so we'll make it 10 again. But then mm -hmm. if you are somebody, say, you have to travel for two months and your season mm -hmm. gets totally scheduled, you're like, well, I guess I'm just going to catch up with the Powerfuls in literally one week, probably, mm -hmm. to what the old pinnacle grind was that took somebody all season. Mm -hmm. This also takes, like, your full season grind for, like, the top players. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting at 960 gear score, you start the season at only pinnacles helping you. Mm. Not one powerful reward is going to help you. If you are 960 mm. now... Not one powerful reward in the game Preach. is going to help you. Preach and that, that was the same issue whether it was like only artifact 959, 60, and like 960 was just the grind for the year at mm -hmm. ones, which was going to be slower. Or same thing now, whether it's just 10, you got, you spent all season knocking out these pinnacles and you get there. And as you said, it might be quicker now. It probably will be fairly faster. Mm -hmm. But then it's just like, or you wait to the next season and you have it in like, you know, powerful drops in a week and you're done. And then you have the pinnacle grind. You're like a week behind the hardcore player who plays for three months straight. Right. So then does the hardcore person's time feel valued? Mm -hmm. And also, all the other powerful things in the game, every single person who does bounties in the tower, your strikes, your talk gambit matches, it. your talk crucible matches, it. your rotators, talk talk all it. of those have next to no point very quickly. <laughs> so, bro, I haven't done gambit in weeks. I haven't done activities that I would normally do in weeks because it's no incentive, right? There's no incentive. You That's the biggest problem, I think, and it's flawed. I'm so glad you said it. it it's flawed. Like, if they're going to do this, at least, because to me, you kill off those activities for the hardcore player. So at least you need to offer an option similar to how they did with the Nightfall, where you got your levels either some type of incentive for, with wins, score, or something in said activity that was only a powerful, that at least there's an opportunity to get a pinnacle in that based on level of difficulty or whatever, because that's my problem. Right now, Destiny, the way it's structured, is I am not playing those activities without any pinnacle reward. I'm, I'm eliminating every, once I have that cap, I'm eliminating every powerful thing off the map, which yeah. sucks because these activities are real cool to play. I'm sorry. I had to go on. You, you, you got me going. No, no. You got me going. I mean, that was the point I was getting at. Yeah. So, I mean, you have all these activities. You have bounties at every one of the characters. I'm like, it's just another roll of something. It's not going to be a good roll in armor, by the way, because most all the things <laughs> you get from your bounty turn and suck. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the high stat rolls, and this is a whole, that's a debate for another day. Teddy, we may bring you back if we just do an armor 2.0 podcast, but because mm -hmm. we could go to town on that one. But yeah, that's the big issue with that was the main issue that Tassie had is like, if you don't get the 50 power level buff, you take all the powerful rewards, you take all those activities and you don't give them a reason to play them. Now, the other side of what they're trying to do, and this is where they are trying to walk a line that they probably shouldn't be doing is you have them trying to say, Hey, what if somebody falls off for season eight and season nine wants to come back in season 10, they don't have to go as far to catch up. Right. So they're trying to keep the a la carte people somewhat satiated. I get that. Yeah, I get that. That's I was like, that and I, is. I was like, that is what that is. But it's mm -hmm. like it's kind of the worst of both because you devalue the pinnacle grind because you'll be done with whatever you didn't get in mm -hmm. about a week, and then you still have twelve more, eleven more weeks, mm -hmm. and then you're back to the pinnacle again. But then if you get to like, okay, so this season, if we're at nine sixty for the powerful, we'll have mm -hmm. that probably the first week or two. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, how much do I care about the pinnacle grind? 
to go to 970 mm-hmm. if I know in the first week of, you know, March 10th, if in that first week, that's when I'm probably going to get it. How much incentive Facts. is there for me to do that? Where's my, what do I get out of that? Facts. I'm curious so, where Teddy's at with this. I'm very curious. So I, I have, threw all that up in the air, Teddy, yeah. so go nuts. I have a theory. Um, Let's go. And I have no no evidence to back this up. I just, I just mm-hmm. think this is what they were thinking when they initially mm-hmm. described the, the Pinnacle reward. So I think that the mm-hmm. old Pinnacle system from 950 mm-hmm. uh, to 960, where you were getting one in every slot and you had to get every slot up, was meant yes. to last the whole year. Yes. I, I think it was supposed to last the whole year, and then... Mm-hmm. I think somebody at Bungie did not do the math and was mm-hmm. like, because Reddit immediately was like, "There's not enough drops in a season to do it across three characters," and that's assuming, Thanks. and that's assuming you got perfect RNG, which let's be real, <sighs> that's never gonna happen. Like Preach that's it, that's not just not gonna happen. So I mm-hmm. think uh, again, I have nothing to back this up other than just like mm-hmm. my own intuition and theory that this was supposed to last the whole, uh, the whole year, and because of the backlash they got, to their credit, they were really quick to correct it, but mm-hmm. I think they swung a little too far and. The easier direction and now it's i mean mm-hmm. like you said it just it really devalues uh mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm not even 960 and that's because i i just don't even care like i'm like it, it just doesn't matter and now that they put this out yeah. i was like in in well, a week i'm really glad i didn't do it yeah in a week i'm gonna yeah. get i'm gonna get the last drop i need to hit 960 and guess what i only have to do pinnacles and you know what yep i ain't doing any of those powerful rewards because those are useless <laughs> so Preach. like that's again it, it goes back to this time management thing right i'm not gonna do the flashpoint because mm-hmm. the flashpoint doesn't give me anything i need uh, yep. And there's no gear that comes from that that's desirable. Um, so it's it's, it's I, don't know, I agree with you. Like it's just it's this weird it's this weird problem, and I, I don't have a solution for it. Uh, uh, I think mm-hmm. doing I think doing the 50 power is also too much because then you have to you have to balance all these things, right? Like if you if they raised it by 50, the nightfall has has to go up. The yep. nightmare hunts, uh, mm-hmm. which if you're still doing them for whatever reason, those now become mm-hmm. a joke or easier. Mm-hmm. Um, the raid now becomes really easy uh, or easier because mm-hmm. you're doing more damage uh, to things. And right. since, since they change how level damage scaling works from 50 to 100, um, you're doing more now. So that, there's all those other things they they probably considered and were like, it's just easier if we do this 10. Uh, but I totally mm-hmm. agree with you that it just 100% devalues your hardcore player's time, which, in my opinion, this is 100% opinion, I think that's the audience Hello. you cater to. Uh, Hello. Like, Hello. I'm, you know, I would consider myself a hardcore player. I'm not the mm-hmm. hardest of hardcore players, but, mm-hmm. and I would consider you guys probably hardcore players as well. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you cater to them, everything just trickles down, right? Like, yes. and, and people learn, people adapt, people get better, and, and it, it, it becomes this, this ever, your community thrives, right? Um, mm-hmm. Now, there are games and arguments, uh, cases against that, uh, that I think where yeah. that didn't happen, but uh, that's another mm-hmm. topic because I think that's gamer mm-hmm. culture more than the game. Um, but it's, I don't know, it's an interesting problem, right? Like, like how would you guys solve it? If, 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 if you were at Bungie and, and, and they gave you, and you're in the meeting room with the two people and you're like, they're mm-hmm. like, figure out this leveling problem, go. Yeah. How would you guys um, tackle it's it? It's like, my theory before was, as you said, they swung too far with the twos, that the pinnacles, like, I mean, if, okay, multiple things. One, it was meant to last the whole year, tell us. Mm-hmm. That would be stage one. If they're like, the 950 to 960 was like, hey, here's this pinnacle grind. It's going to be slow. This is not to meant to happen in this season. Let us know. And then people have been like, okay, well, I'll do our best. We know we don't have enough to get it this season. We've looked at the drops. RNG may or may not be there. And the RNG kind of sucks. But if it's meant to be the whole year, that would at least have explained it. Mm-hmm. The other side is if when they swung it to twos, people are getting up there noticeably faster because you only need four. And I said this on a previous podcast with you. I was like, somewhere in the range of one, t- like, z- like zero to two. Like, somewhere in that range. So, like, maybe you do get a two. Maybe you get some that are mostly ones, and you get this other one that's two, and you're like, yes! And you get that little extra bump that Mm -hmm. kind of pushes you maybe that little nudge, and then you get a bunch of ones that kind of start filling the gaps, and you get another two, and you're like, cool. Like, that would kind of give a little more... And I know it's only one to two, but, like, Mm -hmm. one is too slow, two is too fast. Just the very... The chance at a two Mm -hmm. gives that little bit where that might help you a little bit. That's just... That was my only theory, but I mean, mm-hmm. other than that, just if they wanted to keep it at 960, they should should have just communicated that and explained, right. hey, this is going to be a year, but they're just like, they didn't say anything, and people are like, right. we don't know what's happening, and they didn't even say this stuff in the stream, and everybody was like, mm-hmm. why did it take damage, or Dylan tweeting, saying, there will be a level increase, then it comes in this, and then we see, like, why did this take this long? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, Teddy, you know, I think it's, 
it's the problem right now is the devaluing of content and it, it just sucks it, it really sucks to log into destiny right now the last three weeks for me has been the same thing it's like oh i better this week okay i'll play you know i can i can get something out of that um you know and, and as far as like i said the other activities on that director they, they need value they need value we even discussed last last word which is you know a rotating older raid pinnacle thing you know what i'm saying yeah I remember you know that. that was good you know we, we need more sources you know what i'm saying and, and it's again because ultimately it's not even just if you know if they're worried about the power creep ultimately at the end of the day if they, they're so concerned about locking it into these three activities or what have you you you're devaluing your product you have a great bungie has a great product have a great product like gambit prime all that stuff and all these different crucible all these things are fun things that the community likes to do but when you just section it off you know i i have to see those engagement numbers we know they look at you know statistics very hard but we have to see those engagement numbers we have to see what's going on but i i would be i know put it this way if i'm not playing that's a problem you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I rarely stop playing this game. That's how much I love this game. So it's been a very casual focus for me to, you know, to log in on a Tuesday, see what's going on with the reset. You know, I'm in and out, and I'm gone. But, you know, ultimately, got to see if that that that's where this thing is going to go. And I think it needs to be corrected. That, that's just where, that's where I'm at. I, I can't see this, in my opinion, as sustainable for a healthy base, player base, if they keep this cadence, they have to change that, at least on the rewards that you, you have. You can't have sectioned off parts of your game completely, you know, devalued and useless. That's that's where I'm at. Yeah, I'd have to imagine and, that uh, a very small number of players hit the or hit the power cap to start Pinnacle. Mm -hmm. So 950 in this mm -hmm. case. And right. so the amount of players now that are only chasing Pinnacle is... Right smaller than the amount of players that are chasing everything else but then you need mm -hmm. other players with you to do these pinnacle things which is kind of your problem right. cognito which That's is no you're, yeah you're, you're, you know you can't do half these things solo or most of them solo um mm -hmm. i don't know again it's just a weird problem right like i i don't have a solution for it i don't i don't know how they would mm -hmm. tackle it right so it's, it's maybe next season might might they might have mm -hmm. a better way of handling it yeah we'll see I'm we still got one twab left for next week. Yep. You know, we still have to see, you know, the engagement there and what what other changes are coming if we figure that. But that's what I got. Yeah, we'll have the patch notes on Tuesday and then kind of see about the final, the uh, the new season twab um, mm -hmm. since the season starts on Tuesday. Final piece mm -hmm. we've got is the Eververse store. Changes coming to some economy duplicate purchases, but I think the big one everybody's curious about. Is the silver only content? And Teddy, you sound like you had an opinion. So, the uh, changes coming to Eververse. Thoughts? I mean, I, I think it's smart of them to just release what's going to be silver only uh, at the beginning of the season because that that one guy on Reddit was just leaking it every three weeks, and I was constantly <laughs> checking that. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry for saying that while you were shout out, shout out to the one you on Reddit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I and, and mm -hmm. literally every Tuesday, as soon as I would get home uh, or, or wake up, whatever, I would I would check. Um, open up dim go to vendors mm -hmm. and see what i had check boxes on for bright dust and i was mm -hmm. like all right cool like uh, i don't have this one i'm gonna buy this one uh, if there was something for silver that i felt warranted my money i would i would purchase mm -hmm. it but that's usually far in between but then this leads me into my bigger issue which is the bright dust economy and mm -hmm. i started uh shadow keep with about seventy thousand bright dust uh, yep. It could have been higher than that if I didn't spend all of it for bad juju and, and just grinded yes. it like, like a normal Shout human. Shout out to Cal was taking it. Yeah. Everybody's right there. Shout out to, yeah. the, to the trophy room. Uh, that was definitely <laughs> intentional on their part. And I knew oh, it. you know damn oh, well yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I knew it. And I didn't care. I was like, whatever. It doesn't yep. matter. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have, but we didn't know what was coming at that time. So, yeah. uh, But I... I, I think Fitzy or someone on Twitter, shout out to him and whoever did it, mm -hmm. uh, did the math, and it was like the amount of bright dust that you're getting currently, and, and with the changes even, it's it's currently you can't, it's not even enough to buy one item. If wow. if you did everything on every character that you could possibly do wow. uh, every week, it's like just shy of enough to buy one item, or wow. uh, an exotic item. I think you you can buy like the legendary and blues and stuff, but an exotic item right. that's like two thousand plus or something, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's not enough. And with the new changes coming, mm -hmm. uh, you will have enough. But that includes yes. events. Uh, 
which is their change, right? They're changing it so mm-hmm. that events now yeah. also award the same amount. But even then, what if I don't play that event? What if I don't have time mm-hmm. to do all three characters? So what, like, mm-hmm. and you're telling me, you know, this thing's only there for a week, and typically mm-hmm. brightest items are only sold once, just like the silver mm-hmm. items. Um, mm-hmm. Again, this is this it's this weird place that they kind of sit in because on the one hand, mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. Their company, their business first. You know, it's it's business first, video game second. Um, mm-hmm. They might not see it like that, but from the outside, that's that's how I perceive it. Um, they have to make money to survive to to exist, and so I get mm-hmm. it. Uh, and as long as people keep buying stuff, you know, they'll keep making more. Um, mm-hmm. The duplicate protection thing, I think, is a uh, is a warm welcome. And and now yes. now that Eververse uh, will just flat out tell you that you've uh, what you have, you have. Whereas before, mm-hmm. certain items you could buy twice, which I thought was like super bizarre. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm glad that they're listening to feedback, and I I know they constantly say that, but. Uh, Mm-hmm. Because I kind of know some of them, I I, I do know that mm-hmm. they do take this stuff seriously. So, um, I never when, the, when I know it's a meme and and they you know we kind of make fun of them for it sometimes. But it, it, at the end mm-hmm. of the day, that's what they do, right? Like they mm-hmm. they listen and sometimes they don't communicate what they're thinking. And I think that's something they could improve on. But yes, uh, my bigger uh, issue with a lot of this Eververse stuff is actually the the quality of the Eververse items. Um, mm-hmm. I still don't quite understand why Eververse gets all the coolest stuff, but my in-game armor <laughs> is a reskin. And I, 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 this topic's been beat dead Let's go. A, a thousand times on Reddit and Twitter and wherever, but uh-huh. it is it is maddening to me that Eververse... I know for a fact Eververse is going to have the best-looking armor. Let's let's just be real. Um, this season. Let's, let's that, call Empyrean, it. that Empyrean cartographer this season is gorgeous. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. and, and I'm going to lose my mind if there's another reskin armor in the game I, I used to i used to not care about reskins because mm-hmm. i know that destiny is a fashion game for a lot of people but for me personally i always put on whatever's optimal i never care what right. i look like that's just how i play mm-hmm. i'm in the minority when i say that i know people don't okay. think like that but whatever whatever the optimal loadout is for the thing i'm doing that's what i'm gonna put on it's pretty rare that i, I take off the optimal loadout so fashion mm-hmm. for me is out the door but mm-hmm. When I'm looking at the same armor over and over again, like, come on. I, and, and, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know, do something. Bring back faction rallies. The faction armor looks cool. Oh. The fact that Iron Banner is getting a, a reskin for the second time. It's not even the first time. It's the second time. Like, come on, guys. This, I'm not a developer. I'm not going to pretend like mm-hmm. I understand how long it takes mm-hmm. or the resources or the time. But mm-hmm. I have to imagine... That there's a Talk pretty about it. there's a pretty dedicated team of people that's making this stuff. Talk about it. And for with each armor set, I know you got to make three because there's three different characters. They're not mm-hmm. that different. Like the accents mm-hmm. are a little you know similar, slightly different, but it's it's more or less the same, right? Like mm-hmm. it can't be that hard, right? There has there has there has to be some other reason or motive or something. Um, mm-hmm. But we'll never get that answer, right? Even if I ask them point blank privately, they're never going to give me that answer. So <laughs> I've just I've just come to accept that this is it's the way it is, and mm-hmm. I'll support them where I feel like it's warranted, and I'll I'll mm-hmm. criticize where I also feel like it's warranted. So yeah. I don't. What, what do you guys think? I, I kind of that was a long rant, but no, that was great. Oh, no. That was great, no. man. Cognito, take it away. Ooh, man, where do I begin with this? Um, Eververse is always a very interesting subject. Um. Necessary evil Probably. is the way I like to. <laughs> is, is the way I like. I mean, evil's a strong word, but it, it, that, that, that's what it is, right? Like, it, it has to exist. Yeah. It has to exist, right? And it, it's just one of those things, you know, that <laughs> it, it's just it's just one of those things where it's like, look, we know they they at least they're transparent with us, are saying that hey, you know, this is helping us as a studio. You know, I remember one comment Luke made. He said, you know, because of Eververse, whatever, it helped fund some some other bit of content. When Whisper of the that, Worm helped fund Outbreak Prime. Yes. Oh, it was Whisper the or, of the Worm? The yeah. or, Whisper of the Worm ornaments helped fund ornaments, Outbreak yes. Mission. Yes. yes. So when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, okay. You know. But on the flip side, where I'm with Teddy is that it's like, okay, we've had it now for a while, and I'm going to be 1,000% real with y'all. It's to the point where I'm more excited to log in on Tuesday because Eververse's refresh is going to be something exciting to see rather than vendors in the game. 
Like, that's a problem. Like, if I don't care what Shax and, you know, all the other major NPCs have, but I'm coming over there to see what Tess is talking about, you know what I'm saying? Man, it's working. But they, it's, it's working as intended <laughs> for them. Cognito, you know they they put in a pink mini sparrow. You got to buy it, right? Like, <laughs> I got to buy it. Listen, and I, I'm guilty. I, I, I am the first to admit if there is something remotely fire in there, I am putting the money, throws money at the screen. Well, that was the, yeah. that was the expression. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that yeah, was me. I'm the throw money at the screen guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I admit it. I fall victim to it, but there has to be a balance, right? And when you, when, when Teddy's talking about people doing the math of the algorithm or what it would take to earn some of this stuff, you know what I'm saying? Then coupled with the fact that now we, there's silver only content, you know what I'm saying? You know, there has to be a little bit of a balance in that regard. And I think right now, it's skewed. Now, they are saying they are listening to feedback. You know what I'm saying? They are saying that they hear what we're saying in reference, and we've heard that before. We, you know, But at least I'm confident that there will be some changes. I, I'll put it this way. I was, I was kind of upset at the end of the season of Opulence when they got rid of the all of the Eververse bounties, right? Because are, are they still in game? Nope, nope, they're, nope gone. they're gone. Right. That, that, to me, was weird. Because I'm like, okay, I get silver only, but you have so crippled us with the amount of how this resources to get bright, bright dust. Like you're really going in the other direction. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it, it's tough because you love this studio. You want them to survive. You want them to thrive, right? But at the same time, if everything is behind there, it's like, man, like it, it, there should never be a point where Eververse is so much dominatingly cooler than in-game rewarded armor sets and stuff like that like it, it's we're getting there now like it is so much better to look at you know the um the the the, the, the battle pass armor than the raid armor that's a problem that's a problem you know what I'm saying? like we we shouldn't be looking so much better like you have to reward the the gameplay you know what I'm saying and, and that's that's the struggle so it, it it's tough man you know I do like the transparency that they put this in here though you know what I'm saying I, well, I want to give them credit I don't want to make this complete bash fest you know what I'm saying but they they they're still not there it's still skewed way too much in one direction and it's got to fix but that, that's my rant with uh with uh, the whole eververse thing where where are you at with this uh e? <sighs> Uh, I mean, I'm kind of with Teddy. It's like I started the season at like 70,000 Bright Dust, and I've mm -hmm. been really fickle with like spending it mm -hmm. at all because mm -hmm. we do creep up at such a slow, slow pace. And also, mm -hmm. they're only putting Bright Dust into the events. Yeah, the dawning will be a month long, but mm -hmm. it's still just an event. Like, mm -hmm. and the, the other side of it, as you guys are saying, is completely accurate. Why does... All of the cool armor have to be in there. Not like, give me, like, the dungeon could have just a cool, what happened oh. to just the damn, like, give me Zolmak, give me a suit to look like Zolmak in the damn dungeon. Mm -hmm. Beat him, like, five times and start checking boxes on a triumph or, you know, beat, you know, different, mm -hmm. I don't know, something in there. Or a ship from the dungeon that actually looks like it's kind of on fire because when we used to do, like, raids, what was the coolest thing to get? The raid ships. Now you do a 980 Nightfall and you get a reskin trash ship. <laughs> I'm you sorry. I got that 980 the, ship and I was like, wow, this is you nothing new. You got the weed whacker, uh, vex offensive stuff. You got feeling the aesthetic. <laughs> oh, that wasn't even the one I was talking about. But yeah, that's... So it's like, what? It, the Empyrean Cartographer is the set this season. It's gorgeous. It's got cool colors. It's like very almost royalty looking. It looks mm -hmm. sick. And, like, the raid, actually, I've seen some people in the raid army that do look kind of cool. Um, but it is, like, one of the few. There's mm -hmm. not many places to earn hardly anything that looks good. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be everywhere. And they can have some sick-looking stuff in the store. And they mm -hmm. are gonna. And this is where the issue of, like, hey, if 50% of the stuff that was sold for Bright Dust over the mm -hmm. course of Undying, they're going to take that up to 80% of everything available mm -hmm. for Bright Dust in Dawn. Mm -hmm. We still can't get that much bright dust. I've saved a lot, just like some of you guys have. Mm -hmm. But for a new player who logs in, they're still screwed and they're just buying it. Yeah. Or they're not. And it, and it's also some of the prices on these things. Woo. If they were cheaper, I would buy more of them. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at like the sets for armor and I'm going, your expansion is $10 and you want 
21 dollars for a set like one set of armor i'm going on excuse me yeah that's uh i was about to bring that up actually that's it's hard to justify a ten dollar item when yeah. your expansion is also ten dollars <laughs> Are you saying that's not that's a false equivalent? Are you implying, Teddy? That the, that the... <laughs> it's the, like the, I I can and it's kind of like, it's the it's a business practice, and I understand mm -hmm. they may look at other things, and that's a piece of like what is your stuff valued at? But in the other side, you have to find that supply and demand, and I don't know what their data says. They have mm -hmm. plenty of it. Maybe it's selling. I don't oh, it's know. It's definitely selling because she, she's but, out here moving, baby. But she's I guess like if they creeped some of that stuff down or. What if they had done like, you know, towards the end of the season, hey, if you've waited this long and you haven't bought it, hey, here's like a end of season sale on some of this stuff. It's 50% off. Let's like, get them Black Friday discounts in that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Something. She oh, should have had a Black Friday sale, man. Oh, they, yeah. they did. It was on the bungee store. <laughs> yeah. And I, I did get a shirt on there because shout out to they, Brian. They, they had a sick shirt looks awesome. Oh, yeah, Brian. He's a killer. He's a beast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just the price per thing. It's like when the Imperian cartographer set is 2100 for a set of armor, an ornament is 800 I'm like, I understand. I want to pay your artists, and I respect all of them. They are mm -hmm. amazing at what they do. Mm -hmm. But in turn, if you don't put so many of them out of reach, if I was like, mm -hmm. if I spent 10 bucks and I got like two or three things, I would more frequently spend that $10 because I feel like I was getting a decent value for it. Mm -hmm. And people will say Fortnite skins are twenty bucks. Well, that's a ripoff. I would never pay either. It's like I, that's just I don't know. Just bring some of the prices down. Make the bright desks come more frequently. Like it's two hundred for the weekly and ten per repeatable bounty. The only mm. person who got to enjoy that one is Bagel, four K, <laughs> who has like a f more repeatable bounties than anybody else. He's the only one whose bright dust this season has gone up. Salute Everybody to else. Okay. Salute. <laughs> Wow. Everybody else's bright dust has been dwindling fast and hard, and wow. you should Shout reward those too. players who get like level two fifty. Let mm -hmm. them buy one. Let them buy one or two exotics. There's enough stuff in there that you're still gonna taunt us with money and yeah. be like, "Hey, I still got all this cool stuff. I know you want it, mm -hmm. but at least mm -hmm. if I earn one or two things, I can buy like that one extra thing." The mm -hmm. kid who can't ask his parent for a cart for a credit card, mm -hmm. but can play many hours because. For some reason, right. his parents don't care how much he plays. This is just a weird hypothetical. <laughs> not, not uncommon, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, it's fine. Just go play your game. You're fine. You you just raise yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, it's like, at least they might have a chance. Hey, if I work really hard, play a lot, do these bounties, for, I can buy that one thing by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. You're making it so hard that you can't even do that. And I think yeah. that's, as you said, it's like one exotic, unattainable within a season. That's mm -hmm. too far. Like, you need to either balance the prices or give us more uh, bright dust because that's, I think, the part. However much is out there for 50% or 80%, not everything's going to be available. That's fine. The bright dust economy, I think, is the harder issue that needs looked at at this point. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree, man. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. But, yeah, the changes must, must be made. They what? I just said changes got to be made, man. They got to yeah. be made at some level, you know? So, yeah, um, just for everybody's heads up, if you made it this far in the podcast, then Absolutely. cool, because you guys are hardcore and rock stars. Um, so you guys are amazing, actually. Mm -hmm. So the big thing at this point is if you haven't done anything for the season, you have about four days to do it. And then mm -hmm. it's all going away. So yeah. check the page, see what triumphs and titles and activities you may need to do in case you're trying to finish things up. That would be something you might want to check on quickly. And other than that, that is kind of where they wrapped up the TWAB. And I think that's probably plenty for us this week because we are coming yeah. up on like three hours. Oh, yeah. It's a lot. Which is so we have we have abused this man's time. But, Teddy, <laughs> you have been. All right. I'm talking to you guys. Uh, this is fun. <laughs> this is good. It's been amazing to make it through this one. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you all for hanging out this long as well. You guys have been great. Uh, we are going to wrap it up, but don't run off. I do want to send you guys over to another Twitch channel so we can raid somebody. So mm -hmm. first thing before we go, Teddy, um, tell them what you got going on. If they can find you anywhere, just find you on Twitter, anything like that. Let them know um, what you got going. What, what are you working on? What are you looking forward to? Um, what you got going in the future? Yeah, so I don't, I'm not a streamer. Uh, I actually kind of live mostly a private life, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little mm -hmm. more secluded. But you can find me on Twitter at uh, Teasing Teddy. It is T E A. T E A S I N G T E D D Y, all one word. Um, I'm pretty good about responding to things or anything that pops up. I'm mostly just trolling people with memes and gifts. That's, that's kind of <laughs> kind of my forte. Um, like I said, I don't stream or anything. Uh, I mostly play Destiny. I you know go to work, go to school, do all that. 
Nice. All that fun stuff, and uh, I thank you guys for having me. This was a uh, this was a blast. This was awesome. super fun. Thank you, brother. Got to bring you back too, man. Yeah. Love the takes. Love everything you brought. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Cognito, what about you, sir? Yeah, man. You already know about Cognito. First of all, again, thank thanks to Teddy for coming through, man. Awesome guy. Got a chance to meet him at Guardian Con, and he first of all, Warlock main and Controller Gang. I got Guardian a, Brothers. I got to clip that intro you made, man. I, I don't. I, I, that's, <laughs> that was like. I don't. I don't think my wedding will be that good. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta hire him for the wedding. Yeah, I guess. Bro. Introducing. Yeah. <laughs> Salute, brother. I love, always have fun doing them and, you know, just researching people in the community. And yours is a cool story. And obviously, we got a chance to uh, see you at when we were at the fire team chat. Uh, what was it, uh, E? We were both sitting there during the panel. Yeah, we were front row for the we live We were front row for the chat. panel, yeah. So we got to see our boys. And Teddy came up. I'm like, oh, that's what's up. You know, yeah. so it's just really cool to see, you know, to put the, the faces to the names in the Twitter accounts and stuff like that. So I always love that type of experience. And hopefully, you're at Guardian Con. Uh, GCX, excuse me. GCX. Oh, 100 percent. GCX. Uh, last year, right. last year Definitely. was actually my my first year. Uh, I uh, nice. I've been wanting to go for a long time, but the the stars kind of didn't align. And then uh, mm-hmm. I'll make the story a little short. But they some mm-hmm. stuff happened, and then some stuff didn't happen. But we ended up I ended up mm-hmm. going with uh, with Dustin and CJ, and that was uh, nice. That was that was a blast, and I I, nice. I, I can't imagine not going to that. So uh, Florida's not Absolutely. so great. Sorry to anyone that lives in Florida. But, <laughs> Uh, it's a bit hot that time. Yeah, yeah. but uh, mm-hmm. uh, Guardian Con GCX, yeah, I'm super, super pumped for that. So I'll see you guys there. Uh, Absolutely. Next year, we're running to each other again, yeah. brother. Absolutely. But yeah, man, for me, same old thing. At Lord Cognito on Twitter, Iron Lord Podcast, YouTube. The Lords will be returning to the realm this Sunday, again, 11 a.m. Eastern. We will have a Switch content creator, a guy by the name of The Flannel Fox. Very cool YouTuber. We will be talking that. We'll also do some um, gamer Game Awards nomination. We have a little fun series uh-huh. we call Crown Your Lord. So everyone's going to do their predictions. What if they're going to think good game is going to win in which category? If Death Stranding is going to sweep this thing? <laughs> you know, say so all that good stuff. So it should be fun. A lot fun. of Death Stranding and Control would be mine. So I'm, yeah. I'm just guessing. I haven't played either, actually. So There will be a very highly contested uh, tally up of the votes and then what we do the following week is we uh, crown the winner based on who guessed it correct so yeah check us out on that obviously Iron Lord Podcast and of course LordsOfGaming.net really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us the team has really been putting some great articles out there we got a couple of Destiny articles right now and uh, we had Josh Redding on, on the show he, he put up in reference to the reveal and the fact that the Lords predicted it. We were the front of the first predict to um, the whole Osiris and possibly Sate 14 from way back. So uh, nice. check, check that out so you can support the guys. But yeah, that's what I got, man. E? Uh, I'm going to be watching something on one monitor and spending a whole lot of time in Vex Offensive on the other. Oh, oh someone's going for a title. Undying. Literally, it's all Vex Offensive that's basically left. So okay. that's what that's what remains for me. Mm-hmm. Um if I make it through, you guys will see that title sitting underneath there if my sanity can survive it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got the house to myself this weekend, so it's just me and the dogs, and we'll just see what happens. So that's the goal. Uh, but you guys can find me on twitch.tv slash ebontis, YouTube mm-hmm. ebontis. If you find the cheetah and my name, you've probably tripped into the right place. So thank you guys, as always, for the support. Climbing, trying to see if I can be an official GCX content creator by the time, co- time it comes around. I got about 6,500 subs to go, so we're trying. So... 50k is apparently that mark and you guys have been really supportive so i can't thank you all enough it's amazing let's get them there y'all let's get them there Um, come on so thank you all very much um and again as always if you guys check the comments if you're listening on audio and you made it to the end you guys are all awesome um right now if you guys are on twitch i'm gonna send you guys over to miss noodle she's playing destiny she's really cool very nice uh so go say hi to her for us but for all of us here uh, teddy what we try to do you'll probably recognize this from uh Fire Team Chat, but as the title of the podcast is the last word, we literally ended with those specific words. So I'm going to wrap up the episode number, and then when I say, and it has been, we all try and coordinate the, the last word <laughs> together. Uh, but Discord always screws this up. Just so. be early when you say it. Got it, got it. Yeah, I, <laughs> don't wait on me. You guys yeah. say it, and then I'll chime in. So, mm-hmm. All right, so it has been episode 83, December 6th. Our awesome guest, Teasing Teddy. Find him on Twitter, Cognito. It's been great. Thank you guys very much, and it has been The The Last last word. Word.